Welcome to the 2024 SYC Florida, presented by Storm Bowling, brought to you by Coolwick, official apparel merchandiser of the Storm Youth Championships, by PBA Junior, the PBA Youth Club for bowlers under the age of 18, and by Kegel, built for bowling. By Turbo 2-in-1 Grips, 3G Footwear, Master Accessories, Ballard's Bowling Academy. By Pinwheel.us, Customer Relationship Management. By t and Transportation. And by Quality Respite and Home Care. All scoring is provided by Bowl Metrics, official tournament management system of the Storm U Championships. This year, all SYC events and tournaments are aligned with charities. Ballard versus the Big C and Make-A-Wish Utah. Now, live from from Boardwalk Bowl in Orlando, Florida. It's the 2024 SYC Florida. Welcome to the 2024 SYC Florida. Presented by Storm Bowling. Brought to you by Coolwick, official apparel merchandiser of the Storm Youth Championships. By PBA Junior, the PBA Youth Club for bowlers under the age of 18. And by Kegel, built for bowling. By Turbo 2-in-1 Grips, 3G Footwear, Master Accessories, Ballard's Bowling Academy. By Pinwheel.us, Customer Relationship Management. By t and Transportation. And by Quality Respite and Home Care. All scoring is provided by Bowl Metrics, official tournament management system of the Storm U Championships. This year, all SYC events and tournaments are aligned with charities. Ballard versus the Big C and Make-A-Wish Utah. Now, live from Boardwalk Bowl in Orlando, Florida, it's the 2024 SYC Florida. Welcome to the 2024 SYC Florida. Presented by Storm Bowling. Brought to you by Coolwick, official apparel merchandiser of the Storm Youth Championships. By PBA Junior, the PBA Youth Club for bowlers under the age of 18. And by Kegel, built for bowling. By Turbo 2-in-1 Grips, 3G Footwear, Master Accessories, Ballard's Bowling Academy. By Pinwheel.us, Customer Relationship Management. By t and Transportation. And by Quality Respite and Home Care. All scoring is provided by Bowl Metrics, official tournament management system of the Storm U Championships. This year, all SYC events and tournaments are aligned with charities. Ballard versus the Big C and Make-A-Wish Utah. Now, live from Boardwalk Bowl in Orlando, Florida. It's the 2024 SYC Florida. Welcome to the 2024 SYC Florida. Presented by Storm Bowling. Brought to you by Coolwick, official apparel merchandiser of the Storm Youth Championships. By PBA Junior, the PBA Youth Club for bowlers under the age of 18. And by Kegel, built for bowling. By Turbo 2-in-1 Grips, 3G Footwear, Master Accessories, Ballard's Bowling Academy. By Pinwheel.us, Customer Relationship Management. By t and Transportation. And by Quality Respite and Home Care. All scoring is provided by Bowl Metrics, official tournament management system of the Storm U Championships. This year, all SYC events and tournaments are aligned with charities. Ballard versus the Big C and Make-A-Wish Utah. Now, live from Boardwalk Bowl in Orlando, Florida. It's the 2024 SYC Florida. Welcome to the 2024 SYC Florida. Presented by Storm Bowling. Brought to you by Coolwick, official apparel merchandiser of the Storm Youth Championships. By PBA Junior, the PBA Youth Club for bowlers under the age of 18. And by Kegel, built for bowling. By Turbo 2-in-1 Grips, 3G Footwear, Master Accessories, Ballard's Bowling Academy. By Pinwheel.us, Customer Relationship Management. By t and Transportation. And by Quality Respite and Home Care. All scoring is provided by Bowl Metrics, official tournament management system of the Storm U Championships. This year, all SYC events and tournaments are aligned with charities. Ballard versus the Big C and Make-A-Wish Utah. Now, live from Boardwalk Bowl in Orlando, Florida, it's the 2024 SYC Florida. 
Welcome to the 2024 SYC Florida, presented by Storm Bowling, brought to you by Coolwick, official apparel merchandiser of the Storm Youth Championships by PBA Junior, the PBA Youth Club for bowlers right. under the age. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Boardwalk Bowl. And we're wearing very green. We, yeah. Pretend that this jersey is green. Yeah, I'm not Happy wearing St. green either. Day. <laughs> yeah. Now, Verity, you were telling us, uh, uh, of course, this is Verity Crawley, PWBA champion. Uh, Norm keeps calling you a future Hall of Famer, and I he, love that. He does keep calling me that, and I love that too. Yeah. You know, I know we've spoken a decent amount lately about, like, speaking it into existence, but it's true. Like, the more that I can believe that's going to happen, then the greater it, chance it's going to happen. And actually, this year, I was inducted into the UK Hall of Fame. Oh, nice. So I feel like it's like the stepping stone, right? Like, I've, yeah. done, I've done the British one. The requirements for that in terms of age, I mean, I'm only 29, and obviously I was inducted, whereas USBC, PWBA has a little bit of a different rule. So um, one day we'll get there. Yeah, I love it. Well, uh, Norm is speaking into existence, um, but you were telling me that in England, uh, people don't cra go crazy about St. Patrick's Day like the U.S. No, not at all. I feel like the U.S. just does everything bigger. We do. Right? Yeah, like, we, we do. There will be a few events at home. Um, right. You know, you'll go to a pub and they might have a, a special for St. Patrick's Day and people will be wearing green and stuff. But I couldn't imagine coming to a bowling tournament and, like, here you just see green, green, green. And I'm like, who would not be doing that at home? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, we're, we're, we are wearing green. And they are uh, – there is a contest going on that people can lean – win a DNA coil today if they are wearing green so that might have incentivized them more maybe a I mean I if I could partake I'd be wearing green everything I love the <laughs> DNA coil oh nice well okay so we're going to talk about that because that release but I need to take these off because I can't see with them on so you are more than welcome to keep of course your, I'm keeping them. your glasses it does make everything feel a little bit of a different color but yeah that's okay <laughs> all right Verity's gonna rock the glasses um and we're going to talk about some bowlers. So the bowlers today are bowling on the long pattern, which my handy dandy. Which my prediction is that this is going to be the highest scoring pattern of them all. Well, that is great news because I feel like a lot of kids yesterday told me that they did not have the day that they wanted to have. Yeah, based off the patterns and based off this bowling center, I would say that the short and the medium would play harder in yeah. this building. To me, this is the pattern that I would expect the scores to come from. I mean, we just did the award ceremony, and there was a guy that averaged 250, 240 on the medium, and I kind of wanted some lessons. <laughs> like, I haven't bowled on this, obviously, but that's impressive. I love it. Um, yeah, they're bowling on the 47-foot pattern today, so you would love this pattern today. Sure. <laughs> I would love it. I love every pattern there. Uh, oh, I forgot. We, yes, we're... <laughs> <laughs> we're speaking Welcome into to positivity. No, I know. And I did compliment you last. I'm like, I, I want to hang out with Verity more because, uh, you know, you are just positive all the time. I love it. I'm quite happy to come to Utah. All right. You, you come on down and uh, we'll, we'll chat more about that. So we've got Connor. I can't read his shirt. Does that say? E Ecker? Ecker. That is Connor Ecker. Brian Burgess. Yes. Who... Uh, is from the Texas area, I believe, and has those awesome little, dogs. those are his dogs That's on his cute. jersey. Yes. Lucas Ellis. Caden White is bowling here. Lucas Ellis just committed to U-Pike. Oh, He's very going cool. to college next year. He's getting nice. ready. Um, and then we will try to get the other names. Some of the bowlers are not wearing names on the back of their shirt, which is a slight problematic thing for us because we don't have a sheet with the names. We might get that today, though. Everything seems, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Knock on wood, Blair. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, just, I just thought it. But um, Keegan is in the chat and says, good morning, Verity, good from morning, Australia. Keegan. It, well, it's midnight there, though. You need to go to bed, Keegan. How about that? <laughs> but thank you for joining us. Now you can go sleep. Hello to everyone in the chat. If anyone has questions, I will be on the live stream for at least the first game, maybe into the second game. So if you have questions, just drop a comment. And Blair and I can certainly. Also, if you have questions for Blair, Ask her too. Oh yeah, I, I don't I don't know uh, much of I know some stuff, but uh, Lucas Lucas wait oh I forgot he just Lucas is in the 900 global shirt. I know his name's Lucas. <laughs> so I, I got some inside information, but then the two seconds I was listening to you and then forgot. Goldfish brain. It I was, can relate to that. It was bad. Oh, Rashawn. We have a Rashawn in the bottom right corner. Rashawn. Oh, wait. He's coming back. 
Josh Wilson is in the global uh, shirt. Goldfish gold brain. Goldfish brain. JJ Matthews, I did know, is in the bell mode. He, he likes Jason Belmonte. You think? <laughs> I like Jason Belmonte, too. Yes. All right, let's see who uh, did their homework and filled out bios. We do have one for Lucas Ellis when he comes back up. Let's see if Caden filled one out. You know, I think every time I've been on the live stream and you've looked up a player, there has been no bio. I know. You know, and that's why I have my iPad, but my iPad died. <laughs> I went to charge it last night and I forgot. And then, because uh, we did we did end a little later than normal, so. How was your pizza last night, Black? Listen. We oh. went to this place called Lazy Moon Pizza. It's in the UCF area. It's right by our hotel. <laughs> this, you know how we were talking about American things this yes. morning? This was a very American pizza place. Okay. Okay. And when I say this is they put very, a variety of things on pizza slices, but the pizza slice was as big as your head. Wow. Like it didn't even fit on the plate they brought it to you with. So you basically ordered you didn't order an uh, individual pizza you slice ordered a slice that was like new york pizza times 10 that's insane yeah wow it was i've never seen anything like it our friend michael who's here he runs the pinwheel software he said that it was the he went to a pizza place he liked called sliver okay and it was this was the opposite of sliver Makes sliver. Sense. Sliver sounds like a sliver. Sliver, they make like a specialty pizza and they give you a little sliver of it to yep. try. The, no. This was go big or go home. Yeah, like you commit to whatever pizza slice you are getting and you better like it. And did you like it? Um, yeah, it, it was good. I might, the sauce I got was a little spicy, which kind of threw me off because it was spicy a pizza. barbecue chicken pizza with spicy sauce. I'm not a huge spicy fan, so that wouldn't go down too well with me. Yeah, it, it but was, I like barbecue chicken a lot. Me, me too, right? So Connor, who just threw that awesome strike, he's from Jupiter, Florida. He bowls at Bolero Jupiter. Coached by Brian Mano. Yes, and he. This is his first SYC. Oh, very cool. Uh, so he, before he started bowling, he played ice hockey for ten years. Do they have ice hockey back home? Is that a thing? Not really. No. no. Yeah. Mr. Lucas, oh, it hooked on him. He's from Shine, North Carolina, though. He bowls at Westview Lanes in Wilson, North Carolina, 18 years old. He won the PBA Junior South Regional title this year. He works as a volunteer fireman in his free time. That is really cool. Right? Good for him. I love that. Uh, he wants to say hi to his oldest sister, Lindsay. And, of course, we said he's heading to U Pike, which is awesome. There's a few bowlers here that are actually committed the U Pike next year. Maybe they're all friends and they wanted to go together. Maybe. Um, fun fact about Connor, he's only been bowling for 18 months. I did not know that. I just found that out. That's very cool. Well, he has come a long way in 18 months. This is Rashawn's first tournament as well. Welcome, welcome him. Okay, it looks like this lane is already hooking on these guys. Transition. What's the volume? 25 mils. Definitely on. It's on the lower side for what we tend to see these days. So the players might find, although it's 47 feet, they might find that it doesn't play exactly like 47 foot because of the volume. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky because you feel like you want to keep it in front of you but you also have to find that hold. Nice shot by Rashawn. There we go. He's wearing the pink jersey over there. Our friend Jonathan has been waiting for two days to watch him bowl. Welcome, Jonathan. We're glad Rashawn made it to the live stream here. Yes, we are. <laughs> See, we told you, most bowlers do make it this way. All right, we got a question for you, Verity. Okay, what's the question? <clears throat> this is a good one. How soon do you feel a, that? A, how soon do you feel that you'll see a two-handed 
woman win a professional title? That is a great question. I think it's going to be a lot sooner than we think, and I would envision it to be within the next three to five years. That is we my don't prediction. have that many bowling on tour already. Um, last year, we had a girl called Nora come over from Sweden and compete, but she only came and competed in a couple of events I've because they have. Very good. She is really yeah. good, and I would actually love to see her compete on a consistent basis on yeah. the women's tour. But Sweden have a lot of events, and this year there's actually a few European events going on at the same time as the women's tour. So most of the European bowlers will pick to play the European events. Of Obviously, it's a lot closer and it'll be a lot cheaper. So. Uh, my hope is that in future she does come back out and bowl. There are some up-and-coming two-handed female bowlers who are currently bowling in college. So I'm pretty hopeful once they graduate. My my hope, at least, is that they want to compete on the women's tour. And that way, we will definitely see some. That is, uh, I, I've said, I think it's within five years, too. Yes. I think I think you're right. <clears throat> because of the college players, right? 100%. It used to be when, because those bowlers some of them used to bowl SYCs and I'm like oh I think we're maybe 10 years out but now it does feel it feels close and I hope it happens I mean I a lot of people are against two-handed bowling which I don't understand why for me I'm all for it yeah and again if I want to see good players competing I want to bowl against great players so the more the merrier and if anyone is Kind of uneasy about bowling on the women's tour we do have a fantastic regional program um, that is available to be able to kind of get your feet a little bit wet we spoke about it yesterday a few players who are bowling the syc have bowled a pwba regional so i would highly recommend looking at the schedule they bowl all around the us um, so if you have one close to you or at least within driving distance i would definitely recommend it have you um have you ever tried to the bowling I have tried it in the sense of, let's just do it for fun. Yeah. I have, that's about it. I actually, a while ago, I did a ball review of the trend um, okay. when Belmo first released the trend. And halfway through that ball review, I threw it two-handed. And that's I was cool. curious, like, are people going to watch the ball review? Because if they are, they'll get halfway through and they'll see it. So yeah. that was kind of, uh, so that's the only. Your Easter egg. Exactly. That's the video footage I do have of it. Well, go go watch that if you haven't. Uh, if you ever want to see very people two-handed, actually, go. don't go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> we're not encouraging you. Yes, we're really not. <laughs> All right, Ryan is from Houston. He's on the left wing. Ryan's bowled uh, a few events. The Burgess family is great. He is in the Evolution program, which is a free program for all youth players to join and get some education. Get some great videos from Verity. She shares some tips throughout the way. Um, he recently finished fourth place at junior gold which is a big deal that's huge huge top five is wow. very big deal top 10 is a big deal at junior gold Absolutely. the amount of athletes that compete yeah and he also plays volleyball and soccer for school he wants to say hi to grandma hi grandma hi grandma i love it when they say hi i really love it when they shout out their dogs back home too we had a player that always like said hi to her puppy and i'm like i love this Your family probably watches you on live stream quite a bit. Yeah, as much as they can. Yeah. Um, obviously, the time difference sometimes makes it a little bit difficult. But my mum will wake up at 3 a.m. and she just checks the scores. And then she can't go back to bed. Aww. Yeah, it's cute. But that actually, cute. that was one of the reasons why those of you who watch me compete, I wear a flower in my hair. And when I was in college, that was the best thing for my parents to be able to spot me. Right? Ah. Because in college, you have so many people bowling. There's eight people plus a coach and it's quite a cramped space and yeah. you can't always really see who's no. who's there right so the flower allowed them to like pick me out of the crowd because we all had matching jerseys the ah. outfits were exactly the same but the flower so my mum and dad were like that's verity that is very cool i did not know that i'm gonna see christian mouton on lane 27. he bowled really good yesterday on the short pattern did. He picked up uh, his first SYC title last year. He's really been working hard. He has a very unique look at the way that he starts. Yeah, because now he's going to go backwards. Exactly. It is very interesting. But I guess for him, from a timing perspective, that's what allows him. He has a very good game, you know? Yeah. 
he, I, I don't know why he started doing that. I, I haven't had a chance to ask him. Um, it just started a couple of tournaments ago, but okay. it's very uh, works for him. Yeah. So I'm sure it must have to do with timing. Has that would to, be right? my guess. Yeah. It's the only reason I think he would be doing it. But who knows? We'll have to ask him at some point. Yeah, I'd love to know. Did you ever have to do any tricks in your game? Tricks is not the right word, but you know, like there are things that when you're fixing something. Yeah, um, the biggest thing that I can remember is I used to wear a weight on my left arm. So I had, I can't remember how heavy it was now, but it was it was huge, right? Like back then there was, there wasn't this like- Nice little wrist. Nice weight. little wrist thing that was just heavy. Like it was huge and the edges of it were fluorescent. So anytime I would take a picture, and bowling centers tend to be quite dark, yeah. so we would take a picture and like my arm would just be glowing because of the fluorescent of the weight. But I wore that for probably a good two to three year period, like competing, not just wow. in practice, uh, to focus on my left arm. And for those of you who don't have any you know, concept of what the left arm does, for a right-handed bowler, the non-bowling arm prevents your bowling arm from coming in front. So when you get to the release and you're releasing it, if this arm comes behind you, well, because it's connected to your upper body, that body twists open, yep. and now that right shoulder shoulder has come in front. So that weight allowed me to be more aware of my left arm and actually prevent it from coming behind me so that that way my shoulder and ball could just drop underneath my head. Very interesting. Yeah, and actually now, you know, it's, it's something that people would use as a training tool. So like at Kegel, they have some weights um, and you might bowl actually holding on to the weight. Right. But for Good. me, it's like, that's what I needed. So I just got one of the wrist straps so that that way I could keep it on there the whole time. There you go, coaches. If you have a bowler that you're working with, that's a really good drill or yeah. practice uh, tip. <clears throat> All right, we have some more questions. Okay. Keegan, did you ever throw the Zen bowling ball? Oh, of course. Okay. Keegan is, uh, he just picked up a Zen for the okay. first time. And he is a lefty. He's heard it's pretty angular, but he's wondering, um, I think he's asking like drilling wise, did you drill it weak or strong? What, what recommendation? So I actually had two Zens. I had a pin up one and I had a pin down one. Um, I personally preferred my pin down Zen um, just because it cut the flare a little bit. So for him, if he feels like it's going to be too angular, then if he drills it pin down, it will cut the flare a little bit. So that could be could be a good option. But I wouldn't overthink it. I would just go with your I like I have a favorite pin up and a favorite pin down layout. And sure. I, I normally just go from there. If I want to go a little bit stronger or a little bit weaker, then I can. Oh, but actually the Zen if any of you love the Zen, and obviously it is now discontinued, so you might be looking to replace it since you've had it for a while, the Summit Peak is really close to the Zen. Like, to me, yeah. that's kind of the replacement. I haven't drilled that one. I have not drilled any of the new, well, I yeah. shouldn't say that. I know. I, well, I've been hurt in my okay. defense. Okay. So, but I, I, there's a couple that have come out. I loved my DNA. And so when you said the DNA coil, I am so ready to yeah. drill the DNA coil because I still use my DNA in a uh, league. I think it's a really great ball for kind of the medium shots yep. and, and even house shots. Like Yeah, the DNA coil is going to be more continuous than the original DNA. Okay. Um, I actually just posted a YouTube video to my, I have a new YouTube channel and um, oh, I myself, have to go follow it. yeah, myself and my boyfriend started that. We're doing ball reviews together. Nice. We're going to do a bunch of different travel videos. Like I bought on a cruise ship and so we, we kind of vlogged that. Um, so anyway, we posted last night the DNA coil bore review. I compare it to the DNA, and he compares it to the absolute power. Okay. And what I saw was that my DNA coil was just more continuous than my DNA. So when I needed to move left, the DNA at times would start to give up a little bit. It would be a little bit lazy down lane. So then the DNA coil would come into play. Yeah. All right. Good Good advice. Yeah, I'm, I want to drill that one, the Optimum Idol that comes out next week. That one, I loved the original Idol, and I think a lot of these kids have told me they're excited for that one, too. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, that's a good one as well. Yeah. I did have to bring the surface up. I posted a video on social media of me changing the surface and throwing it. For me, with the box surface, it was just a tiny bit too early, um, which is not a bad thing. If I was bowling on something shorter, then I would definitely need that. But when I was testing it, I was bowling on 42 foot, so I brought the surface up. I like it. Looks like an axiom. I don't think it's an axiom, but it looks it does like, look an axiom. like an axiom. I really liked the axiom. I did too. I loved that ball. 
Um, that is JJ Matthews that just struck. He's from Huntersville, North Carolina. He practices at spare time. We asked him, I, I changed the bio this year because I asked favorite bowling center. I went with favorite practice center this year because I know these kids practice quite a bit. Um, <laughs> he said, <laughs> this is funny. How many SYCs have you bowled? A billion. You don't know who I am yet? <laughs> that is brilliant. I love that answer. Uh, we do know who you are, JJ. Of course. Um, he bowled a 300 at January's Best of the East Tour and finally got his 300 ring. Did they give you a 300 ring in the UK? In the UK, no. My first 300, I got a certificate for, though. Okay. So I have a certificate in my bedroom in the UK for my first Have you bowled a sanctioned one in the... States? Yes, yeah. I have a USBC ring and I also have a PWBA ring. Nice. So your first 300 on the PWBA tour, you get a ring. Good. Yeah. Um, we also have what else? He has bowled 13 300 games, but that was the first sanction. Okay. Um, and he is growing an online business. Wow, that's awesome. He he's not telling us what his online oh. business is, but he's growing one. Well, how are we supposed to help it grow if we don't know what it is? Well, apparently he uh, he's planning to go on Shark Tank. No, I'm just I'm making this up at this point, but he doesn't want to <laughs> tell you us what it is. <laughs> no, right? Um, he is waving from Mickey Mouse's city to his grandma and grandpa and family. JJ is cool. JJ could go on Shark Tank. I'm telling you. Oh man, and we've got a little ball return going on on 25 and 26. It looks like. But look, they've added a little message that says our lane mechanic is working on it today. They had that yesterday, too. Oh, they did? Yeah. It was on us. Well, At least the pairs I saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think it Funny. might be time to take these off. The yeah. They, my they eyes are starting to go a bit. Well, shout out to Nana Starkey, because yeah. Nana's not Thanks, here. Nana. And she made sure she took care of us. She's like, oh, got to have green. And, and I did not... This? There you go. Yeah. Keep them keep them close. You might need them today. The colors feel so different now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think Boardwalk I, No, it was green yesterday, but all the monitors are green. I was like, did they do this on Game 1 is green. <laughs> they did, Blair. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're wishing as I have to St. Patrick's. Yeah. You need the uh, headband that our friend. Yes, I love that. Yeah, there's a, a leprechaun headband next to us. It's got two little hats on it. It's so cute. It has little, little springs. It's bouncy. All right, JJ, entrepreneur. I think he might be throwing a journey, actually. Uh, uh, is it a journey? I was going to say exponent. Mm, they are close. I know. Oh, journey adds up, though, with the shirt. True. Now yes. we're just... Okay, so we're guessing through all the blue balls in our uh, arsenal here. Nana wants you to wear the glasses in the trophy presentations. You know, I really thought about it. It's a journey. Um, okay. Oh, you're right, because of the purple. Yep. I yep. thought about it, but I didn't think Blair would appreciate the glasses and the photos that will get posted on the Storm Junior Facebook page, so you know, I decided to take them off. Brad and Kyle wore a cheese... A uh, wedge of cheese on their heads in our green photo for Wisconsin. So okay. I think we can. We, I think we I'm going to need more than just the glasses, though. If I could get that headband, <laughs> you're in. Then I'm in. Maybe we'll do one with you and Norm with the glasses with the champions. Okay. Like, and then we'll do a normal yeah. one too. We'll have. But multiple. we need extra. Like, okay. we're going to do it. We have to be have full to go. out. Green. All right. Well, if anyone in the building has any other green <laughs> items, bring them to the live stream booth. We'll we will open a collection. Please let us <laughs> borrow it for the final yeah. presentation. We just need it for a photo. That's awesome. Caden here. Caden's got a good game. He's Queen for six. Oh, trip it. Trip the floor. Nope. I'm hoping he makes a move next time. Do you know what we're waiting on on 25? Honestly, I do not. I don't either. There must be something. Well, maybe they just don't want to bowl. <laughs> I understand. I feel that way sometimes. I would quite like to bowl. I really think you would be bowling quite well today on this pattern. 
looks like one that not i mean you pull well on every pattern i uh, see I'm, I'm helping you but this one looks like one that you would it looks like one i'd be throwing an iq to war on yeah yeah makes sense low volume <laughs> i think you would be moving left as well yes but i would probably be making like left left moves to where i'm not trying to hook it very much i'm not trying to throw it away from the head pin all that much because based off exactly on what I'm seeing it, it gets you into trouble when you try and play the position. Yeah. Which is what we saw yesterday, right? Yeah. Same kind of thing. Well, Again, this bowling center, you don't want to be, at least for a right-hander, you don't want to be very left or right. You don't want to be opening up your angles. It's a lot harder to strike in this building when you do that. Now the PWBA did come here. Yes, we did. And Stephanie Johnson won that event. Oh yeah, she yep. did. Oh, that's fun, because Coach Pat probably was here yes, for her win. Yes, she was. That's yeah, and it was like Steph had just got back from having a child, uh, and yeah. she bowled for UCF, so it was like this was kind of her home for a long time. So it was a very cool story. Nana wants to know, um, she loved the Legacy Rising Stars PBA show that they did, part of the All-Star yep. Challenge. She wants the PWBA to do one, too. Nana, if you can make that happen, I am all for it. That would be awesome. It would be really cool. Her, who would you pick, though? What, what, uh, I mean, there are PWBA? so many, like, right. Tammy Turner. I right. mean, you would still have, like, Liz Johnson in there, probably, Carolyn Doran Ballard, I'd, Leanne. Right, I absolutely. Maybe a Wendy McPherson. Yeah, she would be a fun one. There's so many. Yeah. Carol Giannati, oh, if we get her to fly over. Carol. Oh, she's a hoot. And then obviously rising stars. I mean, a half of the field here could bowl. <laughs> oh yeah, there's there's a the U18 girls division is quite. It's stacked. Oh, you watch them bowl and you're like, oh my goodness, they are so good. Yeah. And the U18 boys as well. The, uh, just all the kids in general. The fundamentals here is so good. And for those of you who love bowling, there is a PBA show going on today. Oh, there's that one left, is right? the NASCAR event where some drivers bowl with some of our pros. We have Darren Tang, Kyle Troop, Lindsay Boomershine, and Daria Payok are bowling at 1 o'clock Eastern on Fox. There you go. I love it. Now, what I didn't know was this replaced the CP3 of it. I did not know that either, actually. Yeah, so, and I actually think I like it. Like, I, I like that they did it this way, and maybe they'll continue doing it. I heard the trick show one was fun, and got on SportsCenter. It did? Someone told me last night, they're like, the um, Sean Rash's... Flying Eagle? Flying Eagle made it on SportsCenter oh, in a no. positive way. <laughs> Great! Yeah, no, I that's know. awesome. I actually... <laughs> Obviously, I've been here over the weekend, so yeah. I, I didn't watch. Um, Nana now wants to know, can you pick up the Flying Eagle, or what trick shots have you done? I have honestly never tried. I would like to think I cannot. <laughs> and that is prob not very positive. I know that, Blair. Um, I c no, I can't. I've never really tried many trick shots. I feel like today's day and age it's less of a thing yeah like, that's what i was gonna norm say norm and i were speaking about this last weekend when we were with sean rash in new york and he used to practice the trick shots all the time and right. do them very often but it's not something that we really do well and they all had their thing right yes. like like the machuga flop yeah. everyone knew that and norm had his special one like i feel like they all yeah yeah, yeah so i've i've never tried like i've never even tried throwing it through a chair or over a chair which i would not be able to do the over a chair, yes, and no chance. What's what's funny is back in the day, they used to use a chair when we were learning targeting in our junior leagues. So all of us actually learned how to throw it through a chair. Interesting. Because okay. I'm not sure if uh, liability has changed in uh, probably, your <laughs> but probably. but you know it, it really very few good. of us actually hit chairs. Yeah. Like. Because when they did it, and everyone was so excited, like the Saturday morning, we're like, "Oh, we know it's it's, it's chair, chair day. day or whatever." And uh, and the first time you do it, you're very afraid, but it helps you get perspective too on how much room you actually yes. do have to hit your mark. Mm -hmm. um, and so, because you could miss a little bit and still not hit the chair. 
Yeah. Depending on the chair. Like these were Quite. a good sized yeah. chair. Like I it's love not that. yeah. I used to hit Winnie the Pooh. Oh. So I used to have a like a built PDF kind of thing that went over the lane. It would have a string, but on the bottom of the string, it was Winnie the Pooh. Aww. So Winnie the Pooh would be on my target, and I used to hit Winnie the Pooh, and then he would spin round the like <laughs> PDF. I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's funny. <laughs> Uh, Good times. Slightly traumatizing for Winnie the Pooh, though. I mean, hopefully it was, <laughs> because hopefully I was actually hitting him. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, when I was at SCAD, Katie and I actually made one of those, but we, did, we didn't put a teddy bear on the end of it. We just had a string to That's be able to hit. That's very... That's fun. Yeah, but, like, here, I'm not sure what chair you would use. Like, if you bowled a pro in here, the chairs are attached to the table. Yeah, so. and the other chairs, you could throw it over, but there's no legs to... You'd have to... Probably the ones in the bar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those like yeah, those top. are quite skinny, though. You gotta, hit, you gotta hit your mark. You have to be a pro to go through that chair. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know. I wonder why the trick shots became less popular. Maybe because... I have no idea. Liability, maybe? Or? Probably liability, yeah. They did some crazy stuff. They did, stuff. yeah. Great shot by Ryan. Connor went, uh, he's taking your advice from yes yesterday, and even though he has 237, he's doing a football. I love that. He's yeah. going to get a look at what this bowling ball does. And like I said yesterday, it doesn't mean that he's going to start the next game with it, but it gives him more information about, okay, well, maybe halfway through game two, if I don't like what I'm seeing, then maybe I can change bowling ball and know which one to go to because I saw it in my field shot. I love it. It's a good game, 247. 247. Plus 47 to start the day. You know, the one scholarship we haven't talked about that's in play today, too, is the PBA Never Give Up, uh, PBA Junior Never Give Up Scholarship. So this scholarship is awarded to the gold medalists in each division on the long path. Okay. So what it the, what it's designed to do is encourage a player who maybe had a very rough go on Saturday, just maybe out of the overall competition. Yep. If you come in and have the best pattern today, you'll get a little bonus scholarship. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. It's a good mental training as well because sometimes you have two bad blocks and you think you're completely out of it and you want to give up so that's definitely a, a little incentive to get them to still push through but hey even if you didn't bowl good the last two patterns you can still medal on this pattern absolutely that's what i love about these sycs yeah ryan burgess 224 and that last shot was 10 back that was no uh no Fear on that last shot. Verity, we would love for you to come back for game five. Okay. So as, as we're that. wrapping up, we might even have a, a division. Sometimes it, their division that's in front of us is kind of close. And we can kind of see. Not sure who will be in front of us in game five. I will be back. So if anyone is going to be around watching game five and you have questions, keep them in your mind. What else are you going to do on St. Patrick's Day? Just watch us. Although we might be conflicting with the PPA show at that point. But you could have both of us on. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, have us on the phone and watch PBA on TV. I like it. And it's on Big Fox today? Is it's on Big Fox. Okay, nice. Speaking of very positive, Tom Clark was very positive in a post he just did about PBA. See that one? I did not. He just posted it, I think yesterday, and all of the positives that have been happening this year, all of the TV show viewership is up. Amazing. Which is fantastic yeah. for the PBA tournament. So keep watching it. And they've been some good shows too. Really good shows this year. Yeah. The Anthony Simonson climbing the ladder show is kind of ridiculous. Yes. It's just, he's just, he's an unreal bowler. And if that didn't make you want to buy an attention star, I don't know what will. Right? He made it look, I mean, that ball is special, but he made it look very good on that TV show. Yeah. Two oh four for our, our young man wearing the global shirt. Thanks for repping 900 global. 
what's your favorite current ball like when you're leaving for the tour it can be an older one too but like something current in the lineup that you would never leave home without my spare ball good answer that's a good one not going anywhere without that and i throw the storm mix storm mix there you go there you have it Nice shot by JJ. These, these are some good games here. Yes. You're right. Highest scoring. I see a 231 to the right of us. 224 down there. Yeah, this is going to be the fun one. Maybe we'll, maybe this is the day we'll have a thing. Uh, Rashawn's brother wants to know Rashawn's court. So he is finishing up here. He's on the 10th frame on 28. He can go out for 191. I'm sorry. Wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I was like doing math there, and I'm like. Max score of 191, but he has to get the next two. Throwing a phase two. Good shot. There's the second one in the 10th. Two oh one. Two oh one. Neither See, of us can that so this is where scoring systems are tricky, right? I I that's why I took a second look because I was looking at it. Sometimes they add it in, sometimes they don't. I thought they added it in, they had not. I clearly just trusted you. <sighs> yeah, no. Okay, well even better. He can shoot two oh one. That's how we want it to happen, right? We don't want to say two oh one and then turns out it's one ninety one. Yeah. It's this is this is why I uh live stream on the free channels and not any <laughs> that are paid for everyone. <laughs> and yeah. he got seven. Uh, 198. Still a great game. Good start. That's a steady start. You know, Absolutely. I have to be happy with that. Yeah. SYC titles are awarded on consistency. All right. Verity, I believe that Norm Duke is coming in Perfect. for the second game. Thank you again for spending the weekend with us. Thank you for having me. Thanks You're to everyone for watching. Yes, and, um, oh wait. Oh, there's one more question. Uh, Nana wants to know, is there a pro-am in Rock? Yes, there is. No. Oh, Nana, Nana she will. Na uh, she just bowled her very first PBA pro-am. Yeah. I bet she's going to bowl okay, the... Okay, then you have to bowl the PWBA one. I yeah. Mean, you can't bowl the PBA one and not the PWBA one, so I'll see you in Rockford. Exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> she She's going to wear every button she owns. I That's think. okay. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I will see you there. Thank you guys for joining, and Norm Duke is on his way. Yes. We, we will be right back.
All right, we are back, and we've got some bowlers. We've got some new bowlers. We've got some bowlers you've seen at several SYCs. We've got some first-time bowlers. We got James Dree Hobel the third. He has a cool name. James has bowled quite a few SYCs. As you can see, he has a classic SYC jersey on. He's got an X out breast cancer spare mole. And he was worried about that spare. I don't know why. I'm Mr. JJ here. Good shot. Weston Griffin. Weston's one. He's pulled quite a few SYCs. He's always, he's taller, or he's been tall um, for his division. So he's one that I always think is, like, younger than I think he is. But um, Weston's a, a fun bowler. He's from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He bowls out of Smyrna Bowling Center. First met him when we visited Smyrna Bowling Center a few years ago through the SYC. He was telling us yesterday that he loves his, loves a good home-cooked meal by his parents. We asked him what his favorite uh, restaurant was, and he said, I just like a home-cooked meal. Him and his dad, uh, they recently got some good, uh, good beef, and they were grilling out, and he loved it. So, really fun all these families. Sebastian Huffman steps up on lane 25. He's been part of the SYC family for a very long time. Probably, I think he started when he was in the U12 division, around quite a bit. Janet Bombs is asking, do you know where Trenton Bombs is? And I I saw Trenton yesterday and today because Mr. Trenton always brings us cookies. And today he actually brought us some special St. Patrick's Day Krispy Kreme donuts. But I do not see him in the area, which means he probably will make it this way either next game or... He might not make it onto the live stream pair today. Maxwell here going for the 10 pin. Covers it up. Here goes Hunter Moffat. Hunter and his family have had quite the whirlwind of bowling and Disney and all kinds of things this week, which I love. They've uh, embraced Orlando. Did all the fun things. And he's wearing a Team Shark jersey, which I approve of. Go Team Shark. Good shot. Gets the five pin out. Nice cover by Mason there. All right, if you are watching, Norm Duke is heading this way. He'll be here shortly to chat about some of the bowlers. Good shot by JJ there. Yeah, YouTube or Facebook? Uh, Facebook, YouTube, but that's why I see live.
All right, sorry, we had a question about where to watch the live stream. Hunter here starts with a turkey. Let's see if he can make it four in a row. And he does. He gets a little luck of the Irish today. I think Seabass liked that one off his hand. Leaves a four pin. Doesn't get it to trip for him, though. Sebastian is repping the famous Haynes Bowling Supply out of Las Vegas. Good shot there. That's a double, Mr. JJ there. Manuel Guevara, Guevara, he is 14 years old. He's from Largo, Florida, home bowling center Liberty Lanes. He always hovers around the top five of uh, SYCs in that overall run. He earned a medal this morning. He's not very happy that he just left that split on a turkey. But his favorite pro, pro, pro bowler is Kyle Sherman. He finished 19th at Teen Masters this year, and uh, he's just saying hi to Christian Mouton, who's also bowling in this tournament. Little heart for the, the friends uh, back home from Maxwell. Maxwell is from Keysville, New York. Favorite pro bowler is Matt Russo. His favorite practice bowling center is Rev Rates. He finished top 16 in the New York Masters, and he enjoys track and field, throws dis discus shot, and this year he is going to do some running events. He loves to hike in the, the oh man, Adrian Dax Mountains. I, I don't know if I pronounced that right. And really enjoys fishing. And on Thursday, his mom and him went deep sea fishing, and he caught a bluefish and a sandbar shark. So Hunter's wearing the Team Shark jersey, and uh, Maxwell caught a shark by going fishing. He wants to say hi to his pa, grandma, n nana, also Herb, Sharon, and Mabel. Those are probably the ones that gave him a little heart. Mace in there, pretty cool jersey wolf howling at the moon. He's having a little bit of a rough go on this pair. Maybe uh, suffering from some transition.
Daniel there. This pair does seem to be transitioning. That one went a little high for him. Here's Maxwell. Good shot right on target and oh, Penton doesn't doesn't cooperate. See Mr. PJ over there on lane 27. Pretty solid shot that he just threw for a strike. And Norm has arrived. Hi there, everyone. You took some sunglasses glasses out when you hold up the headphones your green glasses oh careful i see <laughs> well yeah we got we, got we have saint, to save those we got saint patty's day glasses on that are green with like the you know at shape the, of the flower we're gonna take Show one us. picture of you guys well yeah there we go hang on wait let me get a bigger one bigger screen yep we're rocking <laughs> you gotta rock the saint patty's day glass especially when you're wearing blue <laughs> uh, you know what? We're saving these for the uh, final award ceremony. We're going to take one picture with the champions. You're going to wear those. Okay. For the I'll picture. Do it. I'll do anything. <laughs> Norm there. is up. He is. You will do anything. All right. So, Norm, what Man, have you seen? I am watching. I mean, the, the amount of revs that this building has in it <laughs> right now. I just, just a mesmerized. The kids are so much better than we were at this age. Uh, trust me, it's, it wasn't even. I mean, maybe, maybe Weber and I were, were really good at that time, and we were in this category uh, at a young age. But there were like two or three of us. <laughs> <laughs> there was. There's 50 people in this building right now that I couldn't beat at 17. Uh, Weston Griffin just got a terrible break. That was a solid eight, too, wasn't it? That was mean. Yeah, one of the heartbreaks I saw this morning is this this little angel on the other side. The girls are on the other side, and I'm watching her, and she's got four opens out of five frames. Oh. And she gets up there now. She's just coming from the back, so she's obviously got her new, another bowling ball. She's going to make a change. And she goes up and leaves a solid eight. And now her, her first five frames are just <laughs> the worst for her. And she's like, okay, there it is, there it is, ah, solid eight. And I just thought, that's why I retired right there. That's <laughs> why I'm a dunner. <laughs> um, you know who's in the chat? Del Ballard. No kidding. What's up, Delmas? He's probably somewhere watching Alyssa Bull at Vanderbilt now. Yeah, I grew up bowling Del Ballard. Believe me. I, <laughs> he's still good. <laughs> he's, he's still good. Del's, my, Del's so, so, such a great person. Yeah, and he's quite knowledgeable. No, uh, yeah. Yeah. I used to, when Dell was uh, ball repping, kids, if you're ever in an event where Dell Ballard is, you know, he's watching his daughter or he's just hanging out being a pro, uh, he, he can really help you. <laughs> just can. He, he's a great, he has a great eye for the game. <laughs> I just saw the. <laughs> Mr. Hunter there. Yeah, that, with that, the 5'10". <laughs> he, he's, he, look at how he started this game. Though. I know he's got a 5'10". And then the five ten. Yeah, oh nine spare, God. nine spare. He's like, great, thank you. Oh, so Hunter, I'm talking you through through the camera right now. I didn't even think the five ten was even in play nowadays. <laughs> but I suppose it is. You're gonna have to shoot your spare. He'll probably make it too. Come on, Hunter. Spare it. Oh, he tried. He yeah, went for it. Yeah, that was a good shot. Good that try was. at it. Hey, um, I have a question. Verity and I were just chatting. Nana was asking about trick shots and whether Verity could do trick shots. And okay. she admitted that she's never really even attempted a trick shot. So do you know why? 
Do you know why trick shots have become less popular for people to do? Well, I can tell you what made them popular. Okay, good. Um, Let's get some history. You know, Voss and I we used to talk about it. We said, you know, how in the world, when the amateurs average more than the pros, how in the world can we stand out? There's nothing that we can do while we bowl that everybody in the history of mankind can do. You can throw a strike, you can make a split. What can we do? We can't dunk a basketball. We can't hit it 400 yards or hit a home run over 390 feet left center. So we did trick shots. That's how we could that stand out. And I sense. said, look, I can throw a ball out of a towel and, and I'm average over 200. There's no one on earth can do that. And so when I did that trick shot, people went, did you see that? All of a sudden, I became someone. Yeah. And so, therefore, the PBA watched that. We did it during pro-ams every once in a while. And, you know, back then, our scores counted, so it was illegal for us to do it. We'd still do it. Yeah. And they said, there's something to this. These guys are phenomenal. You guys were. That's what we were talking about because I, you know, I'm. I went to my fair share of PBA events. It was Koya Pro Bowl in the 1990s. Yes, we did, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> and, and that was my ho that was where I grew up bowling, was at Sequoia. And so you guys came through there a lot. And uh, you all had your special trick shot that oh, you sure. were known for, too. Oh, like, yeah. Like everyone, and, and you didn't step on each other's toes. Like if Norm did this one and that was his signature, others might try it, but we knew Norm yeah, was the best at of it. Of course. Yeah. So it was cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the towel shot was like my signature shot, and Hunter almost left almost the five, left the five seven. seven. Yeah, well, that, that tells me is Hunter needs to back down on the speed, give it a little bit of room, um, and just give the ball time to pick up and roll, and then start moving. Right now, it's hitting the pins on a skid, and therefore, it's deflecting. I love our friend on twenty-seven who got the memo to wear green today. Good job. Yes, he did. Thank you. And we have okay. green glasses for him if you'd <laughs> like to really style out. Yeah, yeah. Um, what so Verity doesn't uh, play trick shots, and the guys she that, tried, yeah, yeah, the guys that the young guys, they don't do trick. And you know what? I think the big thing is, is their trick play is throwing it over the gutter cap, <laughs> is uh, getting a a blue dot to hook twenty boards, whatever you know. And if it's for score, though, yeah, their trick shots <laughs> are for score. Are actually in right. or or Anthony's backup balls that right. he doesn't do normally, but yeah. But if you look at it now, not everybody can throw it twenty feet over the gutter cap and then hook at ten boards. So now, therefore, they're standing out with their normal play. That's we fair. didn't, and you know, there was really no need for us to throw it twenty feet in the air because when it landed, it was still on bark, so <laughs> it didn't help. You couldn't yeah. overthrow the hook, is what I'm getting at. I got you. Yeah, the good old days of uh, wood and then guardian. Oh, look at that handful. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, That's is how to record. open up a rack. <laughs> yes, yeah, see? Hang on, I, I do want to answer this question. Joseph wants to know what percentage of two-handers are in the field. Great question. Um, we could guess. I'm, I'm, I don't have the actual answer. And this has been something that I have said for the last few years that I wish you know how when you sign up for your USBC card at the beginning of the year and you say whether you're left handed or right handed or both uh, I wish that they tracked two handed are you I one handed they did. and two handed do they track it I think they do maybe they do but my question is is, is it different if you're one if you're two handed and you throw from the left side or the right side like Anthony Simons right? does or what do you say there I'm just two handed <laughs> Or do you right. have to give them, you know, this is why I've, I, I've just, you know, that, when it comes to getting handicapped and when it comes to, it, it just, there's no way to make it fair, so I've never liked it. That's scratch why once I got yeah. to scratch, there was no going back yeah. because I don't have to, I don't have to address any of that anymore. These kids love, uh, I'll tell you what though, I will, uh, we've been complimenting the kids all weekend on their mental game, right? And their Not behavior. Not a lot of behavior. But the other thing that I, I love about the next generation, not that the last generations haven't done it, but these kids crave scratch tournaments and they crave um, bowling on sport condition. No question. They do not want to bowl on a house And that's, that's why we've been saying for years, and I say we, some of the pros that are my age, uh, Voss and I used to talk about this a lot, is the kid's going to save us. And the reason we said that is because uh, the, the generations that were prior to us 
were demanding uh, an eight-hour uh, work day and then to be able to shoot 235 at night. And, and they didn't care about practice. They, didn't, they just wanted to buy a bowling ball, go to right. work, and come and shoot 230. The kids are exactly opposite. They're yeah. like, don't give me anything. I don't want nothing. I want, to I want it hard. I don't want to play checkers. I want to play chess. Chess is a lifetime game. Checkers is a week. They see through that nonsense. Oh, of and by what the we've been way, dealing with. to all the proprietors out there, uh, five man leagues that they that's they don't want to play chess. Five man, those league nights that take three hours to bowl three games. Yes. With five people on a team. Yeah, they, they don't want that anymore. We might have to transition some of that. Yeah, so. and you know, there's nothing wrong with having uh, having uh, stacked leads, uh, like back to back. Right. If you've got three, three or four on a pair, yep. then you get done so much quicker, and then you come in with your late lead. Uh, so there are options, of oh, course. Oh yeah, I, but you're right. Yeah. The, the kids they want to go quick. They, they're athletes. They want to act like it. They they want to spend days. more time on the approach than they do in the back. Yeah. And we didn't. <laughs> we were lousy. <laughs> <laughs> we were just we were just there for the camaraderie. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 fascinating. And by the way, my last league game was in 1982. <laughs> so when I say we used to, that's a long, yeah. long time ago. Yeah, we. Uh, well, everyone asked you when you retired, "Are you going to bowl league?" And you're like, "No, <laughs> no." I, I can't even imagine Norm Duke showing up for league. I can't picture it. No, and you know what? I love bowling. Everybody knows yeah. that I love bowling to death, but I can't match the expectation that I've had all my life. I can't even lower the expectation and match it. And I don't want to go and constantly fall short of, you know, even a compromised expectation. So I'm good. Yeah. I can love bowling without doing it. Absolutely. You can work SYC. She can see the future. Exactly. Hunter, I tried to take your advice a little bit, but he did strike. He got the seven pin out. Yeah, he was kind of halfway there. He threw it a pinch slower, and he got action on the back end. Uh oh, he That's got that it. one left. He There's got that one hold. left, but listen, he got some hold on that. Yeah. Take that double. That'll put him in uh, 210 or two O's. The manual here. What a shot for a turkey. Yeah, this guy just put his whole hand in it and just EJ Tackett kind of thing with ball speed. He did. And he's very young. So, what percentage was asked? What percentage of two handers? I would say right now I'm going to guess. 50-50. And I have a question over here by one of our, uh, our right. participants. So let me get to it. Hold on. I will share that Emmanuel here is second uh, overall, and Hunter finished with a 220. So Emmanuel is in the hunt for, uh, well, it, he, Elliot Gordon is actually pulling away a little bit in the U15 boys division. But the top three currently are Elliot, Emmanuel, and Mateo. Two A team boys overall. Jacob Foxy. He is currently leading. Christian Mouton is right behind him. And Christian LaCory is uh, in third. Wow. I was a ball rep, Del Ballard, if you're still watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the uh, one of the participants just came and asked me. He says, "Norm, I'm just busting the pocket, but I'm I'm ringing ten. I know there's something wrong. I'm ringing ten. This is what I love about these kids. They don't come to me and say, "Boy, I'm so unlucky today." They're like, "I know something's wrong. Can you tell me what it could be?" And I haven't seen them roll the ball down the lane. Yeah. Okay, Blair. So yeah. uh, to say I'm guessing is is an understatement. But you know, I gave him what I thought, and they, I hope it works for him. Well, we can see it. We'll see how your ball repping career is uh, going to go. And right. We'll watch it. And if it. he gets a turkey, everyone in this building is going to go, Norm, help my kid. Yeah, right? Help my kid. Um, Cliff Barnes is in the chat. Hello. Hello, Cliff Barnes with Coolwick. <laughs> Hello, Cliff. Uh, Coolwick signed on this year as uh, our new merchandiser, official merchandiser at SYC. They brought the coolest gear. Yeah, they're uh, right behind us in a booth, uh, Gerald Richardson and Nick. They're, they'll they hook They just you up. took over the concords it's not even a booth it's like yeah you, you walk back and it's you're in cool with it. that's okay though if you've got verity crawley uh, gear you can take over whatever you want yeah and norm duke 
They have some Norm Duke. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't pull anyway. It is her, believe me. Cliff, if you're hanging around, uh, Norm, I would love for you to stay with me through the next I will. game or part of the next game. I'm here. But um, Gerald is coming in in game four. Okay, he's Gerald. Gerald's yeah. with Kulik. We just mentioned him. And by the way, he can bowl. Oh, he can bowl. And he's awesome. And he's so great with the kids. Like, he just loves being part of the event. Oh, man, I just saw it. He got around that ball just a little too quick there on 25, and that cost it to overskid. Emmanuel is in second overall right now. This uh, young man on 25. Right, I can see why. Yeah. But uh, Elliot Gordon, who, uh, Jeremy, I, I was just talking about you, Jeremy Combs. I said, I really miss seeing Jeremy in the SYC. His son aged out last year, is now bowling great at, at college. Um, but he is giving Elliot Gordon a shout out because. Oh, you got a thumbs up. I got Norm. a thumbs up. Oh my gosh, oh. Delmas, I'm coming for your job, brother. <laughs> really, you want to go to a no? <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> um, Elliot Gordon is plus three forty overall right now, though he's pulled. He was averaging he, over two forty. He's pulled ahead. He's averaging two thirty for the tournament right now <laughs> overall. So he's kind of pulling ahead or pulling out in the lead. Nice shot by Emmanuel. You know, Emmanuel. Yeah constantly finishes in the top five at SYC. He is a very consistent bowler. He I does can, his stuff. Yeah, and I can see that. I've seen him out here. I, what, this is my fourth year here now? Yeah, four, yes. And I get to watch these kids grow up. I get you to do. watch them uh, experience what it is they need to go and work on. And I get to see them the next year come in with that in the bag. And it is just a gorgeous thing to see these kids when they, they get better. And they'll even tell you, you know, I struggled with this. Or, no, I got it immediately. This was awesome. But you get to live it with them. Here's Max, too. He, he is a great bowler. This one up on 26. Yeah. Maxwell. He gets Maxwell, and I get Norman. <laughs> God. Maxwell. Uh-oh, that's Brooklyn. Come on. That's Brooklyn. Ah, that's all right. Yeah, he's, he's laughing like I would be. He's like, I hope nobody saw that. Norm, there's a question in the chat. Okay. Do your kids bowl? I have one uh, son. He's 28 years old, and he bowled through the high school. He was on. Uh, he was on the. Ooh, God, I forget the name of the team now. It was the Westlake Eagles, I think. Okay. And when he first started the high school, there were only three people. He oh. didn't even have a full team. <laughs> and when he finished four years later, they had in the 30s, th there were four different divisions. And so he got to see, the, you know, the growth of Claremont uh, Bowling Center's uh, high school bowl. Yeah. Now they host three, three high schools. And then when he got out of high school, he just went to college and didn't, you know, he was there for the camaraderie. Yeah. And I think he did tell me one day, he said, Dad, I don't want to go. I don't want to go pro. I don't yeah. want. And he's a decent bowler, but he was yeah. he was never really interested in the pro. And he would always say, "How can I live up to what you did?" Aww. No way. Do I want that? And I would go, "Oh, son, that's fine. You you can do whatever you want." Yeah. But he turned out awesome. He's 28. He works for Northrop Grumman, and he does satellite communications. And I'm so proud of him. He's great. Great kid. That's awesome. He could probably still beat me. I think there is that little. It, it, it's the expectation put on a, a child of a pro bowler, right? That, uh, and we've seen some of them come through. A lot. Like look at Parker's kids, right? Look at Troop. Troop. Oh, Kyle, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. then, uh, bless her heart. Uh, uh, Alyssa Ballard. Yeah, Alyssa. Yeah, Alyssa and. Justin and Brandon and Sydney Bone. Yeah, they're all they best all, friends. They yeah. all are buddies. Oh, and uh, um, Natalie Kent. Of course. Another one. Uh, but you, I remember we, we often were talking because Justin and Brandon are fantastic and Sydney's great too. Of course. But it almost was like, oh, well, you know, they get to talk to Parker in the back. They still have to throw the ball. Well, not to mention that you could pull Parker out of the building and it wouldn't make any difference. Absolutely. Those kids difference. are great. But they got to be around some of the greatest bowlers. Well, I say some. The greatest bowlers in the world. I held them as children, both of them, <laughs> when they're newborn. I mean, yeah. 
you just by accident you're going to be a good bowler right. when you're around that. But if you look at Alyssa, she's got a little different dynamic. Oh, <laughs> she's yeah. got two Hall of Fame bags. So yeah. you could talk about all those others. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and Ryan Barnes. Right. Yeah. Just made that He's TV got show. Two. Chris and Linda. He's got. They've got two Hall of Famers. And, yeah. You know, and and the Bone family. I mean, Leslie could could bowl. I don't know if she's an Hall of Fame, but she should be. She she's fantastic. You know what she does? She gives back so much to the kids. She runs uh, a. I, I believe she still organizes it, but uh, Youth Open Squad. Yeah. They had to make their own uh, time slot for, for Leslie's group. She brought, like, over 100 kids, uh, organized the whole teams and all the singles and doubles. And then basically the USBC said, um, your squad no longer fits in one of our squads, so we're going to just make you just a make special you a squad. squad. Yep. <laughs> all for you. Yeah. Here, here's to your point um, as we watch 27 and 28 finish up. Yeah, William um, Jacobs, he's going to get uh, 202 with this spare. And that's fine. You know, no, that's 222, sorry. Two, yeah, 222. Yeah. He loves that. Yeah. Jeremy Combs says, Parker was not in the building Sunday, which was sectionals, and Jun Justin flushed a strike in the 10th of game 64 to send SCAD to sectionals. There but you to go. To your point. Parker, oh, yeah. Parker, we love you. Parker's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's not Parker's fault. <laughs> yeah. I just take it. Yeah. I just saw, I just bowled with Parker. Oh, Parker's great. Isn't he great? Oh, he was my little sister's favorite pro bowler. Really? And he was. I couldn't get to your little sister? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Norm. But man. you know what, what Parker did? We were talking about trick shots, right? So at a pro-am one time, my little sister was five five years old still throwing like a little i think she was throwing my old bowling ball it was like a pink mini mouse bowling ball right fingers don't fit whatever uh parker well, picked up her little pink eight pound ball with his pinky with his pinky i've seen this and, one and threw it down and struck and struck and struck with an eight pounder <laughs> with, with her bowling ball and that was it parker was her favorite for the rest of her life yes and parker is <laughs> No, oh, how many favorites is Parker? Oh, Millions of yeah. folks, and for good reason. Yeah. Not only is he one of the nicest people on earth, but he is so willing to dedicate his life to whomever needs or wants anything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then that's kind of like Delmas, you know. Uh, when we were kids, Del and I, you know, we weren't the nicest people in the world. But I tell you what, over the course of the years, we figured out that you can – you can be as nice as you want, and it's not a bad thing. Nope. Yeah, and, and I bet there's a lot of uh, Norm Duke favorite pro bowlers in the building today. I'm working so. them today. Now. I'm working <laughs> You're them. getting it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why those trick shots matter, Verity. Calling her out. You well, make, there's so many memory. folks that remember the oh, trick yeah. shots that, you know, it kind of attaches me to a certain uh, age group. Right. That loved them tremendously. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, the, you know, they, they always say, Norma's great, but Andy Verapapa is better. Why, if you put me in the same <laughs> doggone conversation as Andy Vera, I'm, I'm all over that. Thank you very much. I just want to say thank you. I, I just would like to know if uh, Mike Machuga has any long-term damage from his uh, flop. From his flop? <laughs> like <laughs> I did the flop one time. You did it? Yes, I did it one time. Oh my and it gosh. was Mike, he forced me. He had to do a tile shot, and I had to do the flop. And I thought, well, I got the worst end of this. Okay. <laughs> you did. Yeah, I, I, I did agree. the flop. And in the air, you think, oh, this is over. And then you land, and it's not so bad. Really? It was just kind of the ball lands, and and it lands right with you, and, and all of the weight is dispersed, and you're sliding, and it was fun as heck. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I thought this was going to hurt. Oh, I got two thumbs up on this. I got thank you, thank you on that, by the way. Man. And you would, you may ask, uh, what did you say to the kid without yeah. seeing him bowl? Now that it's been verified, Norm is willing to share his yeah. advice. To help the, <laughs> the youngster get the ring in 10 out. Well, the ring in 10 tells me that his ball is hitting the pins before it's in its momentous. It may be hooking, but it's not rolling yet. So I said, he said, do I move to the right? Because if I do, I feel like I've got overhooked. Ah. And I said, well, you will. you got to go left, back it down a couple more boards, give the ball some time to get into its momentous state. And he said, 
that work perfectly. Awesome. Norm, your future is bright on uh, the tour repping thing, uh, side of things. Yeah, in case I want another 2.5 million air miles, <laughs> there, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, those tour reps work hard. People, yeah. uh, people see them and they don't, they're like, ah, yeah, the tour reps. Uh, those guys are on the road just as much as the players Well, are. in fact, when you get on an airplane, you see all the tour reps in first class, you pass them <laughs> up and all the bowlers are in the back. And it's just because they have more miles than we do. They, they do. And uh, they work, they work, they work every squad, whereas you every get squad. to bowl one squad and, and uh, they get to go and chill and, you yep. know, well, if there's three squads in a day. Oh, the the majors are, are it's like, ah, uh, it's yeah, dangerous. It's, those week, are huh? long, long days. Yeah, and there's so many things that I don't don't like about, you know, what tour reps' life's like. And one of them is they get no credit for victories. They get all the credit for the losses. There's so many people that will, will say, you know, I, they didn't do a good enough job for me. Well, my goodness, they're not throwing it. Uh, Stephanie Alexander says that Keegan Alexander would rather talk to Del Ballard than Scott Alexander. Okay. Maybe I would too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is this the Scott Alexander I know that I used to bowl with on tour? This is the Scott Alexander. Oh, well, I tell you what, either one of them is a good conversation. I like talking to Scott yeah. Alexander. Oh, he was such a. Hey, look at him. He's you got a heart. Giving us a little heart. You do. That was for you. Oh, that's so sweet. All right, we're going to watch Weston Griffin finish up. Then we're going to take a really short break. Norm's going to hang around for a little bit longer. Oh, absolutely. And uh, chat about the next group of bowlers. Oh, we got Grant Taylor making his way in. But um, I'm going to, I you know, all weekend long, we've been getting little snacks delivered to the booth. And there's some mini cookies over here. Sweet. I'm going to eat a mini cookie in our little short break. I'm going to watch Weston here. He's shooting 150 How on a strike. He needs this. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, all right, 150 turns into 160, could make it to 170 here. Now, the difference in 150 and 170 is only 20 pins, but in, to, in your mind, it is massive. It's just, if you bail 170 uh, or you just stay at 150, the difference mentally is incredible. Um, yeah, Keegan Everybody Alexander. knows that, right? Keegan with a smile just. Said he bowled 150. He said he struck out for 150. So just what you were saying, right? <laughs> And he's happy about it he because is. he struck out. Yeah. Oh, this pair is icing, Weston. Come on, 28. Come on. Oh, that machine looks like it's sick. It, it is sick. Yeah, it's sick. It's hurting. And, and 28. We can blame it on Weston. We say your ball was so powerful, Weston, that and we have to. The pins are scared. Change out lane 28 yeah. completely. The pins are like, we don't want Weston to throw another ball. He's twiddling his thumbs. He's like, really? Come on. If you look at the scores here on 25 and 26, uh, the game before us, you got 220, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, and 140. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, and you know, the end of his game, I'm waiting for this yellow thing to move. The end of his game looked solid. So he might have just gotten a little stuck yeah. in the air. Oh, it was the beginning. It was. So well, it was the beginning game, and the middle and the uh, First part of the back end. It yeah. was bad. It took, him, it took him a minute to figure it out. But he's going to go and make the change, and uh, maybe he'll come up with about 250 or 60 and make up for that. Let's hope. Yeah, now what Lane 28 is also doing is cutting into my cookie time. Come on, 28. All right, we got a Let's Go Cody. Uh, Bruno. Oh, we got... We're trying to get all these names together. Yeah. You know, kids Grant Taylor is on the right lane. He's checking the approaches. Del Colton. Warren told him to do that yesterday. You remember that? <laughs> I do. We've got. A, I think we've got a Colton Bennett, a Cody Marius. Yeah, Colton Bennett. I met him a little while ago. He's throwing that purple idol, and I'm telling you, Ooh. this kid has a. He got a release now. Of course, all of them do, right? Yeah, and 
and uh, they're 28. Man, Weston did a number on lane 28. It looks like we're not going to get a short break, so that's all right. I'm just going to munch on a cookie. You munch on a cookie, and I will pray for lane 28. Oh, they got it. They got it up. Let's see. There is Cody, first shot. Well, Cody's ball hooked immediately. So Interesting. he has to move that ball in. If he's going to remain in that uh, sanded sphere, he needs to move it left. So often, uh, folks, what we have is we have so much rev rate on some pairs and not very much on others. That's true. That when they move, a lot of times they'll just sell the head pin because there was not a lot of rev rate in front of them. And then sometimes, just like we uh, watch there, where the ball hits the floor and just moves immediately. Well, ah, oh, nice little spare by Emmanuel there. Nice going, Emmanuel. He looked at you like really norm. Yeah, they all know we're here, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <Not> <laughs> I know this. this pair. I know that because I did it. <laughs> I did it. I'm like, "Oh no, mom's watching." <laughs> oh boy. All right, best Did behavior you, for a game, <laughs> you know. You know, um, our our in-house scientist Brady, the bowling science kid. Um, he did a test one time whether scores dropped on the live stream pair or not. Like he looked in no one way. tournament, he did. He did a little experiment. He found that the majority of scores increased on the live stream pair and that we are not actually a black cloud i'll be done it was it's been proven i wonder why i, I think sometimes you are more focused because you know someone is watching well more people are watching norm is watching norm duke is watching you both and they got girlfriends and boyfriends at home they're watching they do. and they want this is that age yeah. yeah and so he uh Colton here, I met him a little while ago. He really throws it good. He needs to make the spare. He, he threw it to nine pin. He didn't go for it. He didn't even go for it. He's getting one. He's on a mission to get count there. I'm going to have to talk to Colton <laughs> a little bit about that. If you watch this afterward, Colton, uh, you sure you had some sort of reasoning behind that. I want to know what it is. Colton is from Page, Texas. <clears throat> he bowls at City View Lanes. Um, he is 17 years old. Um, he has... Pulled 10 plus, and he has finished ninth in the SYC Las Vegas in 2023. Last weekend, he won the Bolero Youth Classic Atta for $4,000 of scholarship money. Wow. Um, he won the U15 Texas Pepsi event, and Colton is on the high school broadcast news team. So he actually might go back and review us. As you're reviewing him oh, on his so he's going to critique count. what we're doing. For, okay. Colton, don't watch us back. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch us back. Well, I did tell Verity I got a score wrong earlier, and I was like, but I did catch myself, and I was like, that is why I am on the unpaid uh, free channel live streaming at the SYC, and the, the other people are at Fox getting paid to be on commentary. That's what I'm worth. I'm worth free. I'm free. Yeah, as yeah. Well. Okay, so good. So between right. us, we can ask that guy over there to buy us a coffee. We can get a coffee for our efforts because he'll a, bring it to us. That's all. about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, I've noticed that everybody uh, on this pair have, has gone high. Uh -oh. Now, we just had a solid day on 25. He didn't go high. He, he actually dead flush on solid eight and missed it. But what I'm getting at is 25 and 26 based on the rev rate that I have seen off the pair. They're hooking more than pair to the left where they just came from. Let's see how quick they get to it. Cody, right here on the left lane, he went Brooklyn his first shot. He moves left a little bit, throws it to the right, and it hits that spark. So he didn't move enough. I'm guessing he moved about three boards to the left. He needed to move six, eight. Ah, such a great spare out of, out of the gate there, but... When you drop the ball in the gutter, that's the hardest spare to make because you just dropped one in the gutter. And you're like, I can't drop two in a row in the gutter, and now you're going to go high. To totally. Hey, I have a, a question in the chat for you, Norm. All right, let's do that. 
Um, if you could bowl anyone from the past in an exhibition match, who would it be? For pleasure, not necessarily a title. Wow, that's such a great question. And I got to bowl against Earl and Mark and Marshall. I got to bowl. I never bowled against Carter. Uh, but he would not be my choice because I would get to see him, you know, full roll it right up the second arrow. So who would I like? To, I want to do Andy Verapapa. Ah. Come on. All right. You see Colby there. Uh, not Colby. Colton. He moved up, too. I mean, he sent that thing out to the drive boards and it overhooked. So these kids are going to have to learn on this lane, 25 and 26, how many do they have to move? I'm not saying they have to learn that for future. They just need to know it now. Right. And they better get to it quicker. Now, when you say quicker, Norm, how many? I'd say one shot on each lane. If you can get it after that, you're pro level. That's your goal. I want one shot on each lane, and I want to be locked in. It's easier said than done and probably better than I did, but that's the goal. I like it. I have a couple of questions for you, Norm. But yes. uh, first, I want to see if Grant Taylor, who uh, really solid bowler, look how tall he is. Also, and oh, so close. I know these kids. Can this you imagine seeing me in that shirt? <laughs> <laughs> it it might come down to your knees. <laughs> I put Wes Malott's shirt on once, and he put mine on, and we took a picture. And his my shirt could not cover his upper region. <laughs> and his shirt was down to my ankles. That's fantastic. And he made them promise never to share the big shirt with anybody. And we were in the paddock area, and it was a fun time. I love it. Here's Aiden, too. Let's see him. Oh, his ball is flying. He needs to. Yeah, you're right. This, yeah. this pair is burnt. I There's see the burn, burn too, because he goes spin, spin, spin. <laughs> and you can see it just move. All right. My question is, Norm. Would you ever, now we know you're retired. We've been talking about you being a toy rep, sort of. Okay. And, but no. and you've shared that why that may not be right for you. Would you ever be a college coach? Uh, I don't think so either. No. 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 And, you know, as much as I would, I would embrace it, as much as I think I would do, you know, I would excel there. Right. Uh, goodness gracious. There's so much into it. I mean, yeah. I watch Mike Machuga with Mercyhurst and all the paperwork. The paperwork alone, yeah, I'm gone. I'm out. I'm out. And he shows me, and Mike is an excellent, excellent He's coach, fantastic. by the way. And this Mercyhurst, they're coming from nowhere and actually bowling for titles and stuff. But I watch what he does, and I say, you know, that's just not for me. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I don't oh think people, people do underestimate how much work college coaches do have to do. And, oh, good shot by Grant. But, yeah, Mercy Hurst, so one of our uh, one of our Utah kids goes there, Sammy Stribble. Ah, there you go. Sammy's awesome. We love her. Well, I tell you what, she's going to really enjoy uh, if she spends all four years <laughs> she's, there with Mike. She's a senior. She actually just signed on. Mike hired her um, to help him grow the – uh, boys team. There's going to be a boys team at Mercy Right, Hurst. exactly. They just so, expanded that. Yeah. The only, uh, I shouldn't even say person, not the only, because we all love Sammy. We're big Sammy fans. But I'm a little mad at Mike Machuga. A lot of people stay mad at Mike Machuga. No, I, I, <laughs> I love, love Mike, but he stole Sammy from us. Sammy's awesome. She was coming back to Utah. Now she's not, and she can't watch my puppy, and my puppy loves Sammy. Okay, well, Mike, you need to you need to send a puppy watcher. So. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You gotta right? do it. All right, Colton. Let's see if he moves far enough left. Wow, there's another five pin on the right lane. Uh, this this now at this point you go. What's going on with the rack? Exactly. Right. That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. if, I, if I'm sitting here, which I am, right behind the rack, I would say, "Wow, that's two five pins on the right lane." Note to self that that three pins probably smidge left. Or the head pins a smidge right, and you're getting two pins that are acting like a wall instead of, you know, a triangle. So what would I do? Heck, I don't know. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> Hook. Hit the five pin. I would keep my speed down. That's what I would try to do. And 
make sure that ball gets into a roll. All right, here's Cody. Let's see what Cody does on 25. Yeah, tie again. I'm Cody's say taunting you with that hairdo, though. It's missing the head pin left. Okay. So if you're curious, let's say I throw a really good shot and the burn sends my ball to miss the head pin left. How many boards am I going to move with my feet? Minimum eight. I'm probably going to move a dozen. I may even move 14, 16, 18 and soften up because I'm going to have to get it all the way around and try to bank it off the burn late. Ah. So I'm going to try to miss all of this. So I may just try to step away from it completely. Like just Dominic. like he did, yes. he did just there. Just like he did. Dominic on 26, that was exactly, as you said it, that's what he did. Uh, oh, is this Dominic Gibson is his first last name? Yeah, Dominic okay. Gibson Smith, yep. All right, now yep. I'm with you. I've been calling him Gibson for two days. <laughs> it's all right, we, we got you there eventually. All right, thank you. Uh-oh, hold on, here's here's another reason that our broadcast team is going to get, uh, I just hit a button in our screen shot. Hold on, everyone, I'm, I, I'm fixing this. You hit a button right when he throws his best shot. I, I did, yeah. All right, he's back. All right, Colby, let us see it. No, it's not Colby, it's Colton. Sorry. Yes, Colton. Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah, that was nice. He, he even went with the ball change. You see him taking that idle off. He says, this ball right here is overreacting in the burn. I'd rather ball down than step left. Um, sometimes one's better, sometimes the other. I can't tell you which one at this point, but that's what he's moved with. He's balled down. If he strikes out, then we know which is best. All right, here is a manual. Okay, so I, Verity is on this very positive train, which I love. I do too. I love the way that she is thinking and her mindset as she's prepping for tour. She's very much into the will it into existence area. Now, um, Norm, I want to ask you a question I asked her, which she kind of deflected and put a positive spin on, which I appreciate. Okay. If there's a spare when you were competing full time, right? Is there a spare that you just never want to see? Well, I'm the same as most. Oh, come on. The most. I mean, the three six nine ten is just absolutely brutal. Oh, but I good. would always throw a backup ball at it, so it wasn't near as bad for me. Oh. So I'm telling you, not nah, that's not the one I don't want to see. I don't want to see the two five eight because oh, I typically threw really straight at the two eight, right up the left side. And if you add the five pin, oh my goodness, it was. Now I have to hook it. So the two five eight, I'd rather shoot the three six nine ten than the two five eight. Believe it or two, not. Two five eight. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's the bucket with the little luck yeah. on the four pin late. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. You're like, no, I don't want that one. But I will tell you about Verity when she says you have to will it into existence. Uh, I wrote a book one time, and I say I wrote a book. Uh, Eugenia Kulasinski yes. and I were writing a book. We didn't finish it, but we got about 12 chapters in, and it was called When at Will. What were we doing? The same exact thing that Verity is on right now. She's a lot younger than me. And we're talking about what is it to will something? What is it to will it, in her words, into yeah. existence? Yeah, that's one of the biggest things that we're ever, that's what's going to separate us as professional athletes is do you have the will? Do you have the grind? Are you the bulldog that never quits and just keeps going? You know, I want that. You know, for you old-time golfers, remember Corey Pavin and that yeah, boy, he was just a bulldog. And the will is what basically cements everything. She she is doing that. And, it, and it's really incredible. And I hope the youth bowlers that I've talked to her this weekend, I, I'm, I'm hoping they recognize it. Because she is in the midst. And, and you know, right? She is very close to the tour, right? right? She's a little more than a month out. Right. And so she is, last night, we all were going to get pizza for dinner. She's staying close by because it's a, a far drive home. She, I told her, I'm like, are you, com are you coming to dinner? And she's like, no, I'm not. And she's like, if it wasn't pizza, you might have been able to persuade me. But she's like, I just am so strict on myself right now. I can't, I can't, 
go. It's they only have pizza. And I just it's like she is her habits right now are so strong. Right. And I really believe she is gonna have one of her best years on tour. Oh well there's no doubt about it. Uh, just because okay. of the way she's talking, the way that everything she spins, if someone asks her a negative question, she's spinning everything. Right. It's and amazing. Yesterday when she spun something and said, No, wait a minute, I embrace failure. Yes. I can learn more from failure than I can success. I embrace it. She said, not forever. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. I'm going to flip it. Right. But you have to embrace failure because that's where all of the lessons are learned. All right. We, uh, I'm, I'm looking at some scores. and. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at this They're slowing pair. down. Yeah, we're in trouble in this pair because nobody seems to be, have gotten left quick enough. And that's not going to be left enough. And it will, uh, you know, this game is punishing when you don't get it right. It's punishing. It's like golf. You hit it in the water right next to the green. Well, you're right next to the green, but you're in the water. It's punishing. I make a lot of golf references now. Why do you think? Because I'm retired. And you golf a bit. You live in Florida. Yeah. How, mu how many alligators have you seen on the golf course? Oh, thousands. Over 30 years that I've been here, every time you go to golf in Florida, you're going to see a gator. I want to see a gator. I've come here. I... But I don't golf, so that's how I've never seen a gator. Well, I play golf at uh, Deer Island occasionally. Okay. And Mike Brownsberger is the, the superintendent there. And so I was paired with Mike Brownsberger one time because he's really good friends with Brandon Peterson. And okay. He's in our foursome. And on number one, there are four gators that are just sunning right over here. Okay, And I hit it near the gators, right? Well, I'm okay to go over and get my ball. I'm just not going to hit it right next to the alligator. I'm too small for that. I've got to look like a chicken McNugget to them, you know? So we go over there, and Mike says, no, no, no. You can hit it. You can hit it from there. Watch. And he gets out of the cart, and he walks over to the biggest doggone gator I've ever seen. It's probably 11 feet anyway. And he grabs the tail of the gator. The gator just wanders in the water. And I said, what did, what did you just do? He goes, oh, no, no that's a big gator. You just touch their tail, they'll go in the water. You don't want to do that small gators. He said, they're much. <laughs> he said, they'll have you in a heartbeat. And he said, so I would never touch a gator like that. That is a small one. But once they get 10 feet, yeah, they don't care. They just go in the water. And, and I was stunned. <laughs> I wouldn't even hit my ball. You're like, nope, he's no. coming back. No, yeah, He's he, mad. He's, he's going to see me standing there. And right, and back. I'm going to be the first nugget to be <laughs> chewed on, too. It's not like they're going to go with Randy first, right? Oh, I, I don't know. They t we, when we were visiting Kegel, I asked him, I got, you, you got gators out here? He go and uh, Donnie was telling us. He goes, yeah, one day there was a 10-footer right at the door, right right blocking us from entering Kegel that morning. I'll be darned. And they, you know, and then some of the fun ones, right, they came out and they were chasing him out with rooms, like, and they were enjoying it. Oh, yeah. They were having a ball. I'm like, I, I would not be having a ball. I want to see a gator. I just don't want to have to interact with the gate. No, me either. Attaboy, Colton. That's the way to go. <clears throat> All right. Um, Mr. Grant. Let's see. Grant Taylor just opened. He had, so he's gone spare, open, double, open. Yeah, he's at a 177 clip at this point. And you may ask, what is a clip? What does that mean? That means if you get spare strike the rest of the way or strike spare the rest of the way, then he would shoot a 177. And and Grant is a fantastic bowler. His older sister, Allie uh, Taylor, also bowls in Big Ben. She's heading off to college. She's going to U Pike, Pikeville University. Nice. Good shot by Grant. Yeah, that's much better. Oh, oh he's, yeah. He's not happy with lanes 25 <laughs> and 26. He is, he's like, listen, here. I will figure you out. That is clean right there. Yeah, too Man. deep. Too deep. I'm going to call that. That's too deep. Not that much too deep. It's not yeah. like he's an arrow too deep. But wow, was that clean. It was so good. Hand. Sometimes you can just tell uh, the bullers that are going to be retiring E.J. Tackett and retiring Belmo, you know. I'm looking at these kids going, yeah, y'all are the ones. 
All right, Mr. Dominic. Well, um, the the girls also are going to be retiring some of the ladies on the PWPA tour. Quickly, too, because there's uh, more two-handed women right now in the youth than we thought there would be. There are so far less two-handers right now on the women's tour than yeah. we thought. We thought that oh, it yeah. would grow in unison, right? Yeah. Oh, no. There was a third of the field were two-handers on the men's tour before we ever saw a woman two-handed on the women's tour. True. And here they come, by the way. Okay, so we, Verity and I, someone in the chat asked us uh, to make a prediction. We have made our predictions for when the first woman will, first woman two-handed bowler will win a title. Okay. Let's hear your prediction. How many years? Oh, the start of next season. Ah, Norm Now, it could happen one. this year. No doubt about it. it could, there are women oh, wait, that could two. win. Within two, yeah. But I'm saying one year and about a month from now. Really early in the second season, yeah. And not because we're waiting on somebody. It's just that it's there's time. somebody getting really good right now. Didn't know they were that good yet. And they're going to show up on the tour and just start eating lunch. You're right within ours because we think it's, well, Verity, not, Verity, I think it's within five. Verity said three to five. And um, I said and you're within a year and two months. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I think you're right. But I have a fast forward button. You do, and and I think you're right though because there are some young ladies who bowled in SYCs and are in college, and are nearing the end of the college career as two-handed players. Well, so not they to mention go full time. Yeah, not to mention uh, you could have a winner that's not full time, like 100%, Jillian. You yes. Know, when Jillian Martin came came out, she was bowling right next to me in the Masters. I couldn't keep my eyes off the girl. I said, "Who the heck is this girl?" And she throws it a lot better than me. <laughs> Absolutely. Then her father came to me and said, hey, uh, can you sign this picture? She was in a next level bowl. And I mentioned that yesterday. At, at she was in one of our clinics. Yeah. And, you know, I don't recognize her because she was 13 that time. Now she's 16 bowling right next to me. And she's grown. But that could happen on the women's tour where somebody comes in as a non-champion uh, or a non, excuse me, a non-pro. Uh, and win their first tournament. Okay, Aiden, if you're going to watch this later on, uh, you're on lane 25, and I'm going to speak to you. You're not doing so good score-wise. I get it. But the reason is, is because when you threw your very first ball, uh, you left a solid eight. You missed right, and it kind of hooked early, and that's kind of the reason you left to solidate. And then it overhooked on the spare, and you missed left. And you've been missing left since. The only time you didn't miss left is when you kind of projected it right. Well, that's now missing the burn that these guys have created. So what we have to do in our mind is we say, well, what is burn? Where is it? Burn is the spot where those two-handers have been releasing their ball and where their ball has been hooking as it goes down the lane. And I would... Uh, as I look at this lane, I would say, okay, from the 20th board to the 10th board into out a little bit, right there where, where uh, you say his name all the time. Dominic. And, uh, Dominic. Gibson. Yes. Right where he is. Right. See, now that's going to miss right. It, but from 20 to 10, let's say, is the burn. So if you're going to go and use the burn to your advantage, then you need to jump just inside of 20 to 10, maybe 21, maybe 20, maybe 22, 3. Depends on how much and you get into it. Uh, and as we see, Dominic, he gets plenty on it. So he's way, way in there. And he made the 4-9 and doesn't get credit for it. Doggone. Man. So my, uh, my suggestion to you, Caden, is move left quicker. Even before you ball down. Go ahead and just step two arrows left and say, here we go. Oh, bless his heart. It's tough when you miss right. Well, well, it's in your head, right? What's in their head is I can't go down the lane or my ball will overhook. So they're trying to give it a little more room. And once the ball gets right of the say, five board, there's nobody be playing out there. So we got fresh oil. So as soon as it gets there, it's just a free right into the gutter. So we got to move the kids in. And, you know, you watch the, the people that are leading the tournament. They're already in there. Never lose sight of the fact that when people are on the floor next to you, they're giving you all kinds of information. Take it. That's free information. Take it. Absolutely. And 
wow, does it give you a chance to become versatile when you start doing everything you read and not what you prefer. Like if you prefer to go down 10, like you used to tell me, no. Oh, A board. A, me and a, a board, board is my board. Don't give me off of A board. That's we it? love each other. A board loves me. I love A board. We, yeah. go, we go way back. Yeah. <laughs> a board doesn't love nobody when you're doing it for 11. It's true. Yes, that's true. Hey, uh, Will has a question. But, Hi, Will. Uh, it, it's, I, I looked, it's to I, you. It, well, sort of. So he yesterday, Verity was talking about a mindset book she just read, which has helped her. A mind book? A mind book. It's okay. called, and it's, uh, I had to Google it, but it is The Gap and the Game is the book that she was uh, mentioning okay. she just read. And so, Will, that, that his question was, what was the name of the book? The Gap and the Game. The Gap and the Game. I'll give you some, but they're all 40 years old. And, and uh, Ray is shouting out you. Um, you're educating him right now, so keep going. Okay. Uh, uh, Zig Ziglar, see you at the top. I hated that book so much I read it about six times and started underlining <laughs> all of the things. And it you became, hated it. It became a yellow scribble. But my first time reading it, I said, this is a joke. Okay, I don't like this book. And then I fell in love with it. And then uh, Dale Carnegie, see you at the top, taught me more about people and, and behavior and how to get through and over things. And the same thing said two different ways. And, oh, my gosh, Dale Carnegie was awesome. That's why he's, you know, one of the sold more books than anybody in the history of America, I think. Uh, then In the Mind's Eye was an awesome book. I uh, loved that. Uh, Jose Silva, the Silva Mind Control Method, taught me about, you know, putting your three fingers together and getting your zen. You know, I don't do it that way. But if you've ever seen me on television two fingers. with my okay. hand, flat like this, right above or below my head. Ah. What I am doing is a Silva mind control method. What he used to do with three fingers, I will do my way. And he says, fine, make your own way. And I'm controlling my heart rate. So if you ever see me go up and down with a flat hand uh, parallel to the approach, I'm literally finding my heart rate. I'm finding out where I want it. And then I will drop it to below that so that I can lift it to where, you want it to where to I want it to be. So people ask, well, how do you learn all this stuff from, you know, in your head? Yeah, we, we definitely read books. Just, yeah, I was just genuinely interested. It wasn't yeah. because I was trying to be a better bowler. Our friend Aiden here. Uh, Aiden is, I, I would like to see how many SRT he did, but he, he, he thinks he's having a very bad game on this lane. Um, he's not having that. I, I mean, obviously his score is not what he wants it to be on this lane. Lane, but he's so close and he doesn't know it. He, I think his swing is a little tight. Uh, he just bowled. He'll he'll step up next after Grant. Uh -huh. Swing's a little tight because he's really nervous. Or not nervous, but he's frustrated. Right. And he just needs to move a little left, let his swing go, and no doubt he'd be he'd be fine. And he'll learn that. And he will learn that. And I I talked to him through. Yeah. So if he watches this later on, he's gonna go okay. Where were you when I needed you? In the I army? know. All right? you had to do is just take the headset up and come and talk to just me. Just come help. I know it's so hard. We want to help all the kids. All right. So it's, I, and I can tell already he has not moved far enough. He left. is. He needs to be further left. I think he thinks it's him, and it's not him. I do believe that. He did mouth that to his dad. He said, "Yeah, yeah that's me. It's me." No, no, it's no. Not Aiden, it's you, not you, Aiden. And this is the hard part of being on the live stream here. And we do this so that when they watch it back, they hear. Right. Because it's not always you, right? Yeah, and let me uh, uh, explain how it's confusing. Wouldn't you know? Oh, that was a good shot. That was a bad shot. Wouldn't you know? No, it's not that obvious because the ball hits the floor and hooks before you ever see it. Yeah. By the time it gets into your sight, it has already moved two or three boards. You think, no, nah, I pulled that ball. I pulled that. No, no, no. That ball hooked. Yes. If it was oil right off your hand, it would come into your view and it'd be right on your target line. Uh, and not all of them, but that one. That particular shot, he just threw, he threw it really good. I, it right, was, the second ball was kind of where he needs to have right. his first shot, right? Correct. Yeah. And, and we're going to encourage him to watch this so that he can learn Absolutely. this lesson quicker. It's all about learning. We all still learn every day. Oh, no. Cody still trying to get the ball out. He just says, I'm going to get it out there because I don't want it to go high. Yeah, right. And then Bennett, you know, we talked about him balling down and getting rid of the idol and going to uh, a, a ball that's slicker. Did it work? No. It worked one shot. 
two, two shots, yeah. basically. But the problem is, if he gets his speed a little bit quick, it'll hide your plane through the through the break. If he slows down, it's going to get angular on the back and just go right through the beat like you did on the left lane. So now he's he's got a chance, of course. He's he's got a ball that that will hit the pocket and probably strike if he gets there because of his red break. But he still doesn't have near the room for error. He's changing guys. balls again. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, it something. Uh, oh, maybe not. Hold on. I thought he was changing balls. Did he pick up? He put another ball on the rack. Oh, you know what he's doing? That's his fill ball. So he is—he already has his fill ball on the rack that he's going to try. Oh, that he's going to try. After he doesn't want to try it in the first ball in the tenth, which, you know, I, I get it. So he's going to hope for the best here. Yeah, he got it in the oil and just hydroplaned. He also got a little more speed on that. So hydroplane, it, it, it just can't move when it's skidding down lane. Now, great shot he threw. He did. I liked yeah. it. But because he went to less ball, uh, he is unable to do what I would have suggested, which is keep it the same ball, that idle, and just move, move six or eight boards to the left and just float it. And then you got the whole lane. Which you know. I believe he's going to go that strategy with this next ball he's going to pick up after he makes that spare. Um, Emmanuel's got some friends in the chat that are watching. He just got a strike. He needed it, and he wanted it, and the pins cooperated. Good for Emmanuel. Let's get this double. Let's get this into the 150 range. Good shot, but he's going to be Brooklyn maybe. No. Nope. Yeah, he started out really bad. He's got two gutter balls. Uh, at least one of them's on an open, but if you're Emmanuel's friend, uh, you know what? He's going to be bowling a much better game next, next game. game. Absolutely. Now, we just saw the ball change here with Colby. Uh, not Colby, but Col Col Colton. Colton. Yes. And he went to something even more dull than the, the idol that we watched him take off. Well, he moved to the left, and it overhooked. Yes. All right, stay with the idol. Go on in there, and then drop your speed a little bit. Give them a little bit of time. Just take a deep breath and go, you know what? I got time for this. And just let it happen. I love Grace Diaz in the chat. She's cheering on Emmanuel, and she is willing into existence, as we've been saying, very to y'all weekend. Um, she wrote, you got this, you got this, you got this for him. Oh, now that we talked about Gibson Smith being just a little bit too deep, just maybe a board or two. The reason that he's looking at a split right now is he got around it just a pinch early. And because he's too deep, he catches oil the whole way. He never got to any dry boards ever, and it just hydroplane. Now he's looking at the 810, or no, no, 210. And he needs to make the split. But boy, does he throw it nice. Yes, he does. He makes that split. That's what we like. There is a OB, it, and it's developing more. And well, out of bounds, will, yeah. right? Like, yeah, you've got a long pattern go. where yeah. all, everybody starts in. Then you're going to have a little bit of OB start. But then as you migrate in and you tilt your, your, your angles toward that dirt, if you get it past the dirt or you miss to the right, you're definitely in the OB. And that's why when you see U.S. Opens, you wonder why does everybody start out at fourth arrow in the U.S. Open and go really, really straight? Why don't they just play 10 and go straight? Right. Well, that's the reason is we're trying to get somewhere where we can fall it back in there. And you can't fall it back from 10 because somebody's playing 12 and it's killing your fallback. Yeah. I, yes. All the time. All the time. All the time. You that's, are speaking That's to you me. and me. Now I'm, I'm <laughs> speaking to you. Yeah. Oh, man. Got Earl here, too, on 27. So here's what we're going to do, folks. Um, the 27 and 20 is a little behind 25 and 26, but we are – our friend Gerald from Coolwick is coming into the booth. You want me to go get Gerald? After after we finish up 25 and 26, um, we're going to take a short break from commentary. I'll leave the, I'll leave the lanes on, and we're going to get Gerald back in here so that we have game four. I want him to talk a little bit about Coolwick and how excited right, right. they are for – Joining this SYC crew. Yeah, and ask him to do some commentary, too, because he's not only a great bowler, but he, he has he has a, a gifted tongue as well. He, he's awesome. Yeah. Everyone is loving G. G? Is that what you call him? G? We, we do. We call I call him, him Gerald. Maybe that's because I'm old, but I got to call him G now. G. I'm going to do it cool, too. You know, I'm not. 
to give him the G. <laughs> That's right. All right, so we are going to watch Mr. Aiden, who we uh, really encourage to watch this Zach Aiden. He's had a he's been working hard for this game too. He's yeah. made some spares. He's left some pretty tough. He just is very his. his well, he's in a, he's in the wrong area, yeah. and and he always bowling with rev rate. Yeah. And so he will learn this, and and he's either going to say, "All I had to do was move a couple of dots to the left, and I would have been much better served." And then he's also going to say, but when I move in there, wow, I can get a little more rev rate on it. Yep. And then look what will happen. And then that's where his progression. Continues. I love it. So. All right, Norm. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us this weekend. Love uh, being here. The families love you. You're going to be around. We're going to uh, award some champions later. Later on, yeah. Name, uh, name a few champions, and uh, we will, uh, we'll see you guys in a few minutes. Gerald will be back. Norm's out. Hang tight. Hang tight.
All right, I am back with none other than G. The G. You're just, the G. Right? The G. Is yeah. it the G oh, or G? Oh, it's the G. It's like the Ohio State. Exactly. Oh the G. <laughs> I'm just calling you G. That's your name now. That's it. The, the kids here call you G. They do call me G. So, uh, welcome. Welcome to the SYC live stream. Now, you did get to hang out with Gary in Texas. I did. Which, that was great. Yeah, That was my fun. first one. I was definitely <laughs> nervous. But be honest. Who's better? Larry. Oh, no. Don't do that to me. <laughs> you can't do that. All right. Fine, fine, fine. It's fine. It's go fine. We're guys. different. That's right. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, Gerald, um, you uh, you guys are Coolwick. Yeah. Coolwick joined the SYC family in 2024. You uh, brought some stuff to Texas, and then you brought a truck. Yeah, to we brought the house. We brought the house you for did. Uh, Orlando. It's our our backyard. So yeah, and uh, all of the families have been over in that area. I've heard so many compliments. I've heard the colorways are great, which they are. I've heard, uh, well, a you brought SYC blankets. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. That's they're awesome. all gone. They're I all think gone. they're all gone. I think we have one. We yeah. have one left. One left. Yeah. And uh, and you got ideas for the future, mm -hmm. uh, which is so awesome. So so before we jump into all of your background, because you love youth bowling, you're a yeah. big youth bowling fan. But uh, how excited are you guys to join the SYC family this year? Oh um, man, it was perfect. Like we're a small, we're a small, we're no longer small business, you know. Yeah. But we're we're very family oriented, and we love the, we love kids, and we do a lot of coaching. Everybody in on staff or the employees or coaches or have youth uh, youth bowlers that they mentor. Right. Or so it's perfect. And then I had my youth tour at one point, and I, was, I get to see a ton of these kids, you know, grow up and be better better than me already. Yeah. So. Now, where did your youth tour? take place that was in north carolina north carolina yeah. and uh there there's also this like it, it was the, was it the 12 bagger it was 12 bagger ybt yeah. okay 12 bagger ybt but that 12 bagger that's like a brand now yeah You've made, it's like it's yeah cool. it's his own this is own little thing it's you know powered by cool wig sure but um uh, yeah it's his own brand it's not really a apparel I, a apparel brand it started out as a t-shirt little t-shirt thing but yeah it, it, it got big. It's growing up. It got big for what I was, you know, not expected, but yeah, I, cool. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Well, and now there, you guys, 12 Bagger came on as a sponsor of the SYC too. The little logos down uh, at the right. bottom of the screen. Uh, and I've seen some, look, we got a 12 Bagger yep. jersey right here. Right in front of us. Yeah. So she'll, she'll be bowling on 25 and 26. Uh, the bowlers, I, I have no idea what's going on. There's a delay of some kind. I was yeah, unaware. So a few frames. Yeah. Frames oh, here they come. They're yeah, coming. They're coming. slowly coming. <laughs> um, so we've been watching a lot of the boys, but it looks like the girls are coming our way, which is exciting. What's been the most popular item other than the blankets this Ooh. weekend? Tough one. We, we brought so many different things. Uh, backpacks. backpacks. Those are were, cool. Yeah, they, they flew off the shelf. Uh, the blankets were cool. Uh, we had pennants, and a lot of the kids loved the pennants because they, you know, they mentioned they could put them in their rooms and hang them up. Okay. And we labeled them for each event. That's the the game plan. So this event had Florida. Yeah, I love the, that pennant. So that was cool. Um, joggers. Oh yeah. And joggers. Uh, I guess I'm showing my age. I don't really wear many joggers, but <laughs> that is, I that never is knew that many people wanted joggers until this event. It's 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 happening. I wear, I wear only joggers on the weekend, just so you know. I mean, I have I have my my pair of sweatpants or yeah. whatever you know right. the, the the gym shorts and stuff. But yeah, they were. I need a pair. I need a pair. I need a pair. SYC joggers. SYC joggers. That's happening. Yeah. Hoodies. We're in Florida, and hoodies are still, like, a demand. 
I, I just got completely distracted because Abigail Starkey has Cosmo on her jersey. That she do. Cosmo is my dog's cousin. We've decided they're cousins. It's oh, really? not really. It's not really a thing. But uh, Beth and I, Cosmo and Bosa are uh, a few months apart. I think actually Cosmo is very close in age to Bosa. Uh, I need a Bosa jersey. Come on, G. That's Let's a, go. That's a. That was a special one for her. She has a, a doubles partner too that has his dog Aww. on the back of his jersey too as well. So I love it. Yeah, it's supposed to be for a, a doubles event, but she had to wear it because it's, her, it's fantastic. Her, her dog, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So if someone wants a, a dog jersey, yeah. you can do yeah, it. Yeah, send a high resolution picture in, and I'll crop it out and put it on the design and make it look cool. Hey, we gotta go. Look, we're look cool at this with. picture. Look at, tell me that that on a jersey would not oh, yeah. be adorable. I don't know if it's, I mean. It's not high res, though. This was the, from the Ohio video. State jersey, too. It helps it out, too. Like, <laughs> I know, it, right? it makes it, like, you know, super perfect. Well, he's named after an Ohio State oh, player. He's my guy. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah I have a black lab. He, oh, uh, black lab. Vader. Darth, Darth Vader. That's fantastic. Yeah. Don't, he's he's don't. the opposite of Anakin Skywalker. He has no. I see. I like it. Uh, pointing out her jersey. Yeah. <laughs> there are some cool, cool like, jerseys heading this way. So um, we'll talk about the bowlers as soon as they all get here. They're all still making their way down. Uh, this is game four. Oh, Brad Stark. He's crashing. Oh, the my man, Brad. Man, Brad. He is wearing his lucky t shirt. Did, uh, did he get to apply for the, the, the prize if you wear something green? He is too old to win. <laughs> but it's Brad. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. We got Nana Starkey hanging out, and uh, she wants to thank you, Papa. Well, no, Papa Frank wants to tell G, thanks for the swag bag. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was hoping I'll see you this weekend. I know. You come and Nana, on. but I get it. They better come to Michigan. You said Brad instead, and and listen, I, I made a graphic. Brad has I'm, been. I'm grateful for sending Brad. Uh, you know, no, I, we we I, need I missed, a Nana. I didn't get to see Brad at the last one. I, I know, but Brad doesn't come very often. I get a I get a rotation of all three of them, all four of them. <laughs> yeah. So. Papa's fun. Yeah. Papa, Papa Frank is is really fun. Hopefully, I see him in Michigan. All right, so we got some great female bowlers who are on their way to entering a college years, right? We got Miss Anaya Hall stepping up on twenty five. Now I don't. I think she's got one more year. See if she's filled out her. She has filled out her bio. Anaya Bulls at Fort Meade with our friend Mike Sinek. Shout out to Mike Sinek. She's 16. She's okay. got a few years. Um, she won invitationals in her area. She loves to draw, cook, and she enjoys her school gardening club. Gardening. She wants Ooh. to say hi to her mom, aunt, uncle, and grandma and grandpa. Now, Fort Meade, is that... Maryland? It is Maryland, yep. Okay. Um, Katarina Higler. This is Katarina's final SYC, which is so sad to me. We've seen her every year in Florida. She's bowled all four times that we've come down. Um, she Her hometown is Cape Coral, Florida. Okay. She bowls at Lightning Strikes. She is 17 years old. Um, she has been inducted into the Florida State Youth Hall of Fame for Superior Performance. Um, she bowled her first 800 series of 818 oh, wow. a month ago. She also was just named uh, one of the Gift for Life scholarships from the National USBC. Oh, really? That was just announced this week. Um, she th Now, I can tell you this is true. She loves to read, like, constantly. A lot of times I even read in between frames during Bowling League. She also was reading yesterday morning before the block started. So she is... She's a reader. She's a reader. Wants to say hi to Chrissy Stewart, Coach Tretrina, Tony Del Dato, as we call him, Tony the Tiger, Brian Mano, Danny Berardi, and Lucy Sandlin. All amazing coaches who helped her along the way. As Abby Starkey strikes. There's my Starkey striker. <laughs> I want to go back. I, I want to go back to Abigail. My favorite Abigail Starkey bio, which, by the way, was written by the famous Brad Starkey. Let me find it. I'm spelling her name wrong. 
Brad oh has his goodness. own bio in here. Well, Abby <laughs> refuses to fill out the bio. So one time, um, Brad filled it out for her. So, oh man, Abby Starkey, what do you average? A bunch more than Gary. How many <laughs> SYCs have you bowled? My dad would say a hundred or so. Hometown, I bought bowl a lot. USA, um, home bowling center, Poplar Creek Bowl, a center for the people. Uh, favorite pro bowler, me, which is ridiculous. Because of the epic run at the 2021 Queens. Uh, what do you enjoy most about bowling? Talking about bowling balls with Gary. Favorite bowling achievement? I beat my dad once in practice. Um, <laughs> tell us something cool about yourself. I'm really good at leaving empty Starbucks cups in my dad's car when I borrow it. And uh, he would like to say hi to his uh, friends back home who also leave garbage in my dad's car. Brad is awesome. Brad, <laughs> Brad Starkey. See that bio and never it never goes away. The dad wins on that one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So we just saw Karina Capron Bowl. Another great bowler right, going to Nebraska. Katarina's going to U Pike. Abigail's going to Nebra Nebraska. Karina's going to Nebraska. Morgan Klein's going to Wichita. Um what else we got here? Emma Yoder, she's going to Jack State. Okay. There are a lot of college bowlers in this. Oh, yeah. A lot of great teams. No kidding. Yeah, I, I remember talking to Katarina yesterday. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm a bear, too, so. You are? Yeah. Did I know I, that? I, I don't know. I, I did go I to Pikeville. What year? Saw, ooh, 2005. 2009 okay. 2009 era. Okay, you were right before I was in college because I loved the, the I bowled against Pikeville a lot in college. And yeah, I was part of like the Caleb the second generation, I guess, or yeah, me, Caleb Bandy. Okay. And, uh, Kyle Barnes was on yeah. that team. Uh, I caught the end of Caleb Bandy. That's when I so I started in 2010. Ashley Galante was there. Yep, Ashley. Uh, uh, Jennifer Wright, Wright yep. she was there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a very great female yeah. team. You might, were you before Ashley West? Ashley West and, and I were like very close friends. I was at her wedding. She grew yeah. up with me. Yeah. Like uh, I mean, she's Ashley Kenny now. Is that her last name? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Her mm. her daughters. I used to uh, travel back with her to Columbus to to see my uh, my she father's side, uh, hang out with the grandparents, and then. Oh my goodness! A lot of tier one tournaments. From Columbus. We could have been buddies. Exactly. What? Man. It was just, it wasn't meant to be at that it time. It wasn't. Now we are. Now, now we, are. we are. Yeah, it's it's going. All right. Well, now I have to tell Ashley that I know G. That's right. <laughs> we got to go to a Buckeye game, Blair. Oh, I, I snuck in one this year. I hadn't no been way. in years. I know it was it was, <sighs> and it was one where they demolished them, and it was great. That's good. Yeah, we That's like good. it. We like those. Yeah, especially well, when they win. So in Columbus, because we're going to Columbus, Ohio this year. That's right. Dude. We, I'm excited for that a one. Ashley has to go to dinner with us. I'm we're excited. Gonna, well, yeah. We're going to bring her out. Her mm -hmm. dad works at Columbus Square Bowling Palace. Yeah. Jamie. Yeah. So anyway. I've seen right. him in. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. I've seen him recently at a. I think it was at Expo. It was at Bo Expo, actually. Ran across him. That yeah. Was, that was pretty cool. I love I've seen family. some of these people in like 10 years, you know. I know. Yeah. Get I know. old and I'm work. Sorry. And I'm sorry stuff. for everyone in the chat. That's, although, uh, Emma Yoder's from Ohio, so we do have some Columbus folks that are watching. So that's right. Well, they know all these people, too. <laughs> and uh, Ashley West was, if there was a Youth Hall of Fame, she's in it. She was, <laughs> oh, my goodness, was she a great boy. And now she's chasing her children around. <laughs> it's crazy. All these ladies bowl, throw the ball very well. So good, right? Yeah. All yeah. right. So the pattern today is long, which sometimes can be tricky for for the females, right? 47 feet. That's a pretty long pattern. 25 mils. Yeah. But these girls are like, yeah, no, I'm good. I throw it good. Yeah, they make it look easy. Yeah. But Pretty there sure is I, that OB that's really it developed. Is, yeah. That's why Katarina just hit. Uh, let's see what I haven't looked at the scores. Let's pull up the scores. Cliff is in the chat. What's up, Cliff? Hey. 
tell Cliff I said hello. Hi, Cliff. I could tell Cliff I said hello. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff, we we kind of miss you this weekend. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. <laughs> I, I miss my man. I miss my man, Cliff. I had to fill in. I had to fill in some shoes for him, you know. Oh yeah, I understand. I had to keep Brad happy. <laughs> That's impossible. I'm just kidding. I love yeah, Brad. Brad is awesome. Yeah. Okay, so in the U18 girls division, we've got Aaliyah Miscavige, who's bullying to the uh, left of us. Yep. She's currently, I believe these are current. I, I plus one seventy. Let me make sure. Yeah, these are all these are all current. So Malia Miscavige is currently leading overall. Kaylin Campbell is behind her. She's averaging two thirteen. Malia is two thirteen, yeah. Right. Um, and then Kaylin is plus ninety seven, averaging two oh seven. Abigail Starkey, who we are watching, is plus seventy seven. She's averaging two oh five. And Karina Capron, also on this pair, she is. Minus seven. So the top three have pulled ahead significantly. Yes, they have. Um, let's look at Malia's some. up there, though. She's 100 pins almost. Malia is. Oh, man, Malia, she's on a rampage right now. Yeah. Today, she, her games on the long pattern have been 239, 258, 212. Oh, wow. Karina, 256, 209, 235. Abigail, 223, 236. Oh, and her low game, 189, which it really isn't that low of a game. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take 189 on the long pattern. Amanda Lang, 234, 204, 203. Jeez, the girls are killing it on the long. You go, girls. Yeah. I remember, yeah, on our way to Fort Worth, it was me and Cliff who was at the airport, and that's where we met Malia. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, we happened to be on the same plane, and we, she had a bowler backpack on, and of course, you know, bowlers. And we're like, oh. That's oh, a yeah. bowler. That's what we do. And then I didn't know she was like a great, like, she's very, she's very, very, very good. good. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I asked for an autograph. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, we see Alexis Meadows there. She's from Titusville, Florida. River Lane, 17 years old. This is her first SYC. So welcome, Alexis. She finished top 10 uh, districts two years ago. Two. Years in a row, and she went to high school states. Okay. And she says all of her time is taken up by bowling and work, but she loves taking adventures with her friends when she can. And she would like to say hi to all of the college recruiters. Oh, that's nice. Good job, Alexis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that's watching. Oh. I, I, I should do this. Morgan Klein. I wonder if Tina Klein's watching. She probably is. Morgan, on lane 27. Um, gee, you got to watch this video. We're going to, after Morgan strikes, I'm willing it into existence. She does. she does. Trip four. We're going back to Reno. This is 2018, not 2017. Morgan okay. bowled uh, the very first event in 2017. She was in the U12 division. But check out little Morgan. That's a little wow. Morgan. 2018. She was that small and still small, but now she's throwing it. She's how, throwing it how really, really, powerful, really, really right? good. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. That's what the SYC is for. And yeah. Learning and growing and being being around some of the greats and sharpen up your craft. And it's, it's paying off. You can see it. I'm going to see if Miss Clarissa here has, Clarissa did not fill out her bio, so I cannot, I don't, I don't know Clarissa very well. She might be a first SYC bowler. Did you watch Clarissa Explains It All on Nickelodeon? Oh, kid? that was a long time ago. Come on. I did. That was such a good I show. I did. Is that the one where, like, her friend used to always climb through the window uh -huh. and all that stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Melissa Joan Hart. I don't know who the guy was. Me that neither. Show, that show was... I, went, I fell back into, I got sick a couple weekends ago, and I fell back into the 90s and was watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 
I was really sick. <laughs> <laughs> I needed something. Oh, Karina. Take a step left. Let's take a step left. All right? What do you think? Just a hair. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. It's yeah. close. Maya wearing your 12 bag. Oh, she man. is. Man, I'm oh. jinxing all the kids. Oh, I'm not going to say their name anymore. Yeah, yesterday she had a uh, she had one on. It was a similar similar jersey, but it was like the the blacked out. The, I saw that. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. Maya is from San Antonio, Texas. I wonder if she's pulling the new youth series down that way. Um, seventeen years old. She's bowled two to five SYCs. Really proud of her past performance at Junior Gold. It led her to many opportunities for her future collegiate career. There you go. Where are you going to college? I need to know. Um, she's really good at sleeping anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Might sound dumb, but it is actually That's very awful. useful That's when we drive talented. to tournaments. <laughs> um, she wants to say hi to her family in Guam. Oh, wow. And everyone in San Antonio supporting her. Thank you. And she must have chosen a college. I, so I've decided after this one, we are going to add a little block of, like, uh, where are you going to college? Because okay. Or, like, maybe I'll do, like, where do you want to go? And then where are you? Where are you? I don't, yeah. Like, yeah, both. Where because you some of these kids, where like, you end up going? like, Morgan, she's wanted to go to Wichita State since she was 12. And now she's going. And I love that. Like, it's it's that been her dream. Her, right? right. That was a dream. I like Anaya's game. There we go. G, do you coach some youth bowlers? Uh, currently, I do not help. I have a few that I help. Yes. Okay. Um, but as of lately, over the, la the last year and a half, no. Um, not on a consistent base. You know, if they, they need pointers or if they reach out to me, I, I meet up with them. But um, haven't really had much time to really commit to like a full time coaching. Yeah. Stuff. That's, that's a lot of work and a lot of commitment, too, as well. Absolutely. Both ends, the, the, the bowler and the coach. So. And they're all bowling so much. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. But I do help out the, the local the local youth bowlers in the Niam Center. So. I like it. They get out there and beat up on me and remind me to pick up my spares. Do all the, you know, the stuff that I practice when I preach. So. I love it. I love it. Emma Yoder here on 27. She throws it pretty deep. Take a look at this lefty. Yeah. Man, there, there we I, go. I'll That's take a three-bagger that. right there. I'll take that. She throws it very, very well. Yeah, she does. Heather, <clears throat> who's watching, says that Alexis is a bowler on her team. She is amazing. <laughs> Shout out to Alexis. She's stepping up on 27. Here we go. Let's go, Alexis. He has the Florida flag jersey. Look at that. That one's cool. She's from Florida, so she can rep that right. uh, often. Oh, come on. Uh, oh, almost. almost. <laughs> What's up, Coach? How you doing? Coach Pat Coach in the Pat. area. Coach Pat was schooling these girls yesterday. She was telling them like it is. I love it. She keeps it honest. She does. Yeah, Clarissa is so close. She, she is. and she. Ah, I, I hope she knows how close she is. She's very close. We got Miss Danielle Lucas over there on twenty-eight. She's stepping up. This is her first SYC. She's from Coral Springs. How, how's she doing so far? Um, let's look. I, I think she was up there. She is in 29th okay. of 42, which is, yeah, I mean, that's For the first good day. one, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's good. And uh, let's see. And she gets up there and labels it, too. She does. Um, She loves art, especially ceramics. For college, Ooh. she's going to major in studio arts at FIU starting in the summer. And uh, she's taken ceramics as an elect elective for two years now. She wants to say hi to her family, friends, and her boyfriend. 
Hello. Do, have you done any of the ceramic stuff? I think I took a class in high school, and I think I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to get some lessons uh, from our friend. Did you take ceramics? Uh, I did. I was awful as well. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot in common. Yeah, I was awful as well. And I was, I had my heart set on it too. I know. It just, Everyone loved that class. Yeah. That was really it didn't bad. work out well for yeah, me. Me neither. I think I made like a little tray. It wasn't yeah. nothing special. I think I made a bowl that I still have, and I just have it to remind myself that I should never do this yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it was somewhat of a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, mine looked like it melted and it didn't. It was that's just... that's what mine looked like. Yeah, yeah it's like all crooked and like it's so bad. It's just. I felt bad for my teacher. She she didn't want to just tell me out. It wasn't this good. It wasn't good. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Keep, keep up the good work. Like they're oh, so just... supportive. <laughs> Shout out to teachers. They make us feel so good. <laughs> As I got older, I looked at it. I was like, "What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. What was this?" Oh man. I tried. I tried. I was more into drawing. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Drawing and painting. I was really bad at all art things, honestly. Like, looking back on it, I understand. I really was. I can, I can, oh, look. We're, oh, man. She's in between. She's right in between. Because yeah. I thought that that was going to be good because she moved, her angle was a little, like, she moved her feet. Yeah, I kept her eyes the same. I was like, okay. up a little, yeah. keeping it in front of her. She's very close. Chloe here. Look at that. Oh, a spare. What's that? A spare, three bagger, spare. She's on her way. Gee, what's the. Uh, do you have a favorite jersey design that you've ever created? It's, it's so hard to pick because you do a bunch of colorways. And it's all a kinds ton. Of, yeah. It's a ton. Yeah. I, I really don't have a favorite. I, I yeah, it's hard to pick on that one. Yeah. Because my favorites are very like simple, solid color with a different color writing or logo. See, or that's like that. well, that's my style. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like the I like the colorful ones. I know the kids love it. Like the oh, SYC yeah. jerseys. They love them. Yeah, where's mine? Like this one. I I would not normally wear a jersey like I this. I said that yesterday. But. I'll wear it. I love them, though. I'll rep like, it. I enjoy making them. Yeah. And I enjoy seeing, you know, the kids love them. And they look good in them. And I try to, you know, I, I wear one to try to stay young. <laughs> Agreed. You know, but I'm more of a, you know, solid color. And That's me. Simple color writing. Yeah. I agreed. see my logos and all that stuff. And Although I am, I'm digging this Cosmo picture. Look uh, at Cosmo there. He's Her awesome. Cosmo's about to get the strike. Cosmo is there Abigail is. Starkey's dog. Cosmo with the strike. Cosmo did it. Beth and I were, uh, if for anyone that has a puppy. I love dogs. I do too. And uh, Beth and I both have teenage dogs right now. We've got some, uh, well, I, my my dog is regressing quickly through his training. Mm -hmm. We're going through the... The warning that you, our trainer warned us. She goes, you know, you're going to get to a point where you're thinking like, oh, the training is good. Everything's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden you go severely backwards. And that is what's happening with my puppy at the moment. Who's not really a puppy anymore. He's going to be a two in June. Oh, is but, it the terrible twos? or? Oh, it's, it's the terrible I figured out that I can reach the top of the counter twos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I know I should I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm gonna do it. Well, and he got something delicious because he's quick. He's a little yeah. ninja, and so now it's now it's constant. Well, it doesn't matter two or seven, eight. They they still do it. Yeah. My dog, he's Vader's seven. Yeah, he's seven years old, and he never did any of that stuff. And then he decided to go on a on a like two month span of just you better not walk away from your food oh yeah oh yeah and it's like you never did any of this and you come back in a whole he ate an entire pizza <laughs> and looked at me like yeah that's your fault for leaving it out here like and it's delicious let me know when you order another one 
black labs are are one of my favorite breeds. Super They're the smart. best. Oh yeah, I got a smart one too. Yeah, super smart. <laughs> the only reason that he has to be a little better behaved, and the reason I'm a little more not strict isn't the right word because I'm not strict with him, but he gets he has to go over to the neighbor's house a lot because I travel. Oh, right. And okay. there's two dogs there, and so he cannot be a bad dog because they're not bad dogs. Right. Right. So like. I have to have a little bit of rules. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's a mess. But Black Labs are the best. They got They're an Aussie. Awesome. Yeah. Vader's a, he's an office dog. Oh. He, he, he hangs out at the office sometimes. And he's loved by everyone. I want to meet uh, Vader. Yeah. You, you need to meet him. You'll love yeah. him. He gives a lot of kisses and hugs. Aww. Yeah. He's so sweet. A, he loves people. Yeah, we we're we're dog friendly. We like yeah. dogs. If you like dogs, we like dogs. That's come, right. Come chat with us. Sometimes on the kids' bios, when you ask them who they say hi to, they want to say hi to their dog back home. So. I agree. I miss mine. I can't wait to get home. Yeah. To see, to see my dog. So Karina Caper on here. How good does she throw it? Oh, she throws it good. very well. Yeah. She's with Team USA, right? She is. Yeah, she throws it very good. Yeah. Both those. Both, yeah, Abigail and Williams, Team USA. Yep, they are. Team USA. Lots yeah. of, yeah. A lot of talent. So much talent. But these girls are just so good, all of them. It's just incredible. I watch them, and I'm like, these all, all are just going places. Go. Oh, Morgan. Oh, uh, the chat. Oh, she, shot. Her face when she turned around, she's like, you've got to be kidding me. That's yeah. a nine? Come on. Come on, yeah. ten pin. I mean, you throw it that good. What's up? How you doing, man? <laughs> Joss Weems sighting That's in the right. building. I believe this young lady on 28th's name is Gianna. I believe. I'm not I think she's from the Florida area as well. Let me, let me do a quick. You know, we don't require the kids to put their names on the jerseys for the SYC, which I love. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we don't know the kids. So. I, that is Gianna. Gianna. What was her last name? Gianna Ring, Ringham. And I think that she's one of Coach Pat's kids. Okay, so she's around, around this area. Yeah, now she on the long has been having a little bit of a up and down day um, but pretty consistent just 181 179 165 probably a lot of spare shooting not quite getting into that right part of uh well not even the right part but figuring out where she needs to be hanging out yeah it's hard uh the but she's still in 26th overall so she's having okay, a good so, tournament yeah. yeah the long pattern was always my it was well, not was the long patterns are my struggle as okay. a bowler. So okay. I, I always when I'm watching the U18 girls and someone is having a little bit of a hard time, I feel for them. I'm I'm I am you. I understand. Yeah. I get it. You can attack. You can attack the lane so many different ways. Yeah. Be rewarded so many different ways and be stung too okay. as well. So it's it can be tough. I used to uh, enjoy the long patterns, and then, you know, the body and the swing change, and then become a, a short pattern fan, and all depends on the day, so. Ooh. Yeah. Spares are rough today. JD, you bowl. You still bowl tournaments I, and stuff? I bowl here and there. I, I haven't really bowled much tournaments yeah. in the last couple of years. Every now and, now and then, I'm a weekend. It's hard when you work. Yeah, I'm a weekend warrior. Nice. Sometimes, and then, I, then it's the frustration of lack of practice, and practice is You're the singing. key. Yeah, You're singing so. to me. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta pay in the time. Yeah, they say that. Oh, Ooh. wow. Really? 810? Uh, she didn't deserve that. Oh. This rack has been tricky. 
Oh, there was a 300. There's a 300. There was a 300. Somebody shot a 300. I'm hoping Verity was uh, down there and took a video. And got a video. That's my hope. This uh, 26, and I, I didn't want to say it before this game started, I, I believe the rack might be a little suspect. Yeah. Lately. There's been some 510s five pins that just aren't really fair so yeah that 810 could have that was pretty that was a pretty good shot off her hand yeah that was bad timing for for that oh Absolutely. jake boxy just shot 300 oh, and okay. that's huge but where, where does that put him at well he was leading so that's gonna be he's yeah he's leading so that just means he's extending his lead more outside uh, off of Dominic and Anthony Hornick. So yeah. today, for this, all right. So he's bowled games of two thirty nine, two twenty three, two forty four, three hundred. Oh wow! He's on a he's on a run. That puts him up for the lead for this block or overall. That's overall lead. Overall, yeah, yeah, overall lead. Anthony Hornick's right there with him. He is. So let me look. Um, so not all the scores have been entered. So before the 300 was entered for Jake, Dominic. Oh, you know what? I don't want to. I think these are still being entered because some of these. I don't want to comment yet. Yeah. It's it's that time of the game that I'm like, oh. In between, in between games. Some are in, some aren't. So. Yeah, he's on a roll. Yeah. All right. Fair Maya. Enough. Oh. Roll that four pin. I love it. That's Miss Gianna. She's like, let's go. Yeah, but, uh, okay. There's Karina Capron. Wow, that ball hook. Oh, there wow, we, go. we tripped before. I love it. Rose like, is so good. She does, doesn't she? <laughs> All these girls. I'm like, um, I want to be like you when I grow up. They're so ahead of, like, where we were when we were kids. These yeah. Girls are, yeah, no, they're, they're way ahead of us. Very talented. They're getting that information. They're learning. Yeah. They're learning. The, the coaches are great. This, is, this next generation of, of ladies and boys or men, young men, for the tour, if they, if they decide to go to the tour, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun to watch. Absolutely. They all throw it good. Ellie Kate loves Gianna. I'm finding out. Look at this. Ellie Kate is like sharing with Gianna her life story over there. <laughs> Ellie Kate Marie, that is. The young pro with the bow. That's what I'm calling her. That's what you, she's she's, she's ridiculous. Awesome. She's, she, was, she was my manager a couple of days ago. She She'll she'll yeah. whip you into shape. Yeah, she oh. she came over to the table and she's like, I'm going to help. <laughs> and you're like Sure. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And then uh, she helped me find T-shirts and hoodies and nice. told me to hurry up and all oh, that good. stuff. You yeah. Know, she was, she she was, was on top on of it. me. Yeah. yeah. She was great. She's pulled her fair share of SYC. She knows how it goes. <laughs> all right. Cosmo Luck. Let's give some Cosmo Luck Cosmo. again. Oh, that looks in. Oh, yeah. you are kidding. Oh, back to back. Eight ten. Abby left back to back eight back tens. Back to back eight ten. That is just that was in, but that was not fair. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Eighth and ninth frame. Ooh. Oh my goodness. So we were talking about this uh yesterday. You know when you feel like a balloon has deflated or like a balloon that just got popped and it's slowly deflating? I feel like 
the balloon just is on the floor. That balloon, that uh, that was like all the air out of it. Yeah, that, that was, was gross. Brutal. But she, you know, she's she wants to win, you know. Right. And she's chasing it, and she's she was very close, right? She was yeah, going to the second. I'm trying to pull it back up. I believe she was second place, like 80, 90 pins out from first, and 20 pins above third, or no, she was third. So she's she's chasing it. Yeah, she was in third overall going into this game, and then on the long, this was 223, 236, 189. So. In the 189 game, that was uh, the first six frames. She 10 pin the entire time, and then she threw like a double, and uh. then it was tens, tens. Yeah, she switched balls. And she just couldn't, she couldn't get, get the corners out. And this game, and she then, had a 144 in this, well, she would have had a 150 in the 7. You know, pack in the pocket. Yeah. Back to back 8 to Jeez, that was brutal. Yeah. I, feel for, I, I feel for any bowler that goes through that. That's hush. Yeah, especially in this, the crunch times. This is what, game 4? Yeah, yeah, we're heading yeah, into so. game 5. Last uh, game of the tournament. G, we just want to thank you guys for being part of the SYC. You guys are awesome. We really appreciate the, the opportunity to be part of the SYC. This is great. This yeah. is great. And You're bringing some cool uh, to the SYC. That we are. We're going to continue to do it. And each event, we're going to have a little, a little different flavor. So it keeps everybody on their toes. So that's going to be great. I'm excited for that. That's my little... A little fun right there. Yeah, and Besides you, the stuff online that you could get. Right. That's little, what I was going to say. Like, there's stuff at the tournament you can't get online. Correct. But there, there is a way. Like, if you're at the tournament and you're like, oh, I really wanted that torchy and I didn't pick it up, you can go online and pick Correct. it up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Our, our, that's going to be our, our, our next thing, right? We have, give the tour an opportunity to get it first and then. We'll get that stuff on, on the website for people that missed out. I love it. Going to the tour stop and the order. So it's great. I love it. It's great. I love that. We really appreciate it. We, we thank you, Storm, Gary, Leanne, the rest of your team. It's This is awesome. Well, we're just excited. You guys got anything cooking at Coolwick? Anything crazy? Mm -hmm. I think you can give an insider inside looking although i will tell you every time i go on the coolwick website which by the way it's something different every time every freaking cool time it's amazing but this jacket by the way i think you can buy it on your website yeah but yeah. uh brandy hook uh, every time i i'm like brandy i wear jackets i wear black i i, I can't pick <laughs> out my own clothes i have no fashion sense whatsoever and she's like i got you player. oh when it comes to the garments brandy she knows she knows her stuff so yeah yeah. Yeah. Um, so she was part of the, the the designing for the hoodies and the t-shirts and stuff for this event. So this was our team is great. Our team is great. The, the entire the entire office we all put in that work. So there, yeah, you, everybody you guys, at the office decided is excited for it. So. All right on twenty seven twenty eight we have a two hundred game. That was a hard hard go. I don't remember who the A bowler was. Was that it? would have been um, Benton's Meadows. Was that? I believe so. Alexis Meadows. That was uh, 200. I have a 162, 125, and 26. But it's just been a rough go of things on Twitter. And, and you know, I will say that 25 and 26 has had a lot of rev rate before these girls got here on this pair. And it's always tricky when the girls have to go into where the boys have been bowling. And I think that's kind of what happened on 25 and 26. So the high game is going to be Karina. Yeah, well, if, uh, she spares out 190. And she spares worked hard for that. Emma Yoder here is on a, a, great, uh, a great game. Morgan Klein, 226. 226, yeah. She struck out for it, too. Yep. Emma's up, and she throws another one. Gosh, Emma's won a great game. Right. Strike out for 268. You know, normally, I think your offset 
Gee, I am so glad you're here because normally when the Ohio bowlers come to the live stream, I unintentionally jinx them. Like in the past, mm. I've been a total Ohio bowler jinx because I'm so proud of all of the <laughs> Ohio bowlers. I think you are helping me get over the jinx. Thank you, G. There we go. You bring in a little more there we Ohio go. and it my offsets horror it. Here. Yeah. It's great because Emma is bowling a fantastic game. Oh, dear. <laughs> and I mention it and she splits. <laughs> it's still a great game. It is. It is. Yeah, 250, 256 spares. And Karina shoots 189. Abby ended with 181. We had a 182. There's that, that pair, 25 and 26, which is mean. Go, Emma. Go, Emma. Still a great game. 254. Wow. Man. All right, Gerald. I think Verity is sneaking back in, but we are so excited to see you next month in Michigan. Yes, and thank you for all you I guys I can't do. wait to see you. I know. I, I, thank you. You know, we have to go to Michigan. Though. It's a little cool. I know, right? It's it's great. Let's We'll put these on before we take a short break. It's Shamrock Day. Let's go. Woo! Right. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back.
All right, we are back in Verity. You're back. I am back. Welcome. How, back. How's the last few games been, Beth? Um, well, this pair is kind of turning into a mean pair. The scores have gotten lower on it. But maybe it'll turn around for the final game of the tournament. It's possible. Yeah, I don't know. We've had some weird, uh, either weird, just been some weird racks on 26, which is causing some interesting breaks. Okay. So, it's all right. So, no 260s? No, but 27 28 is a good pair. So, maybe these, I'm, I'm convinced these girls will turn it around. We're speaking it into existence. Yes, we are. I like it. But I did hear we had a 300. I missed that. Jacob Boxty. 300. I didn't hear any cheering. I didn't either. <laughs> Someone came over and said there was a 300. I'm like, what? First one of the weekend. And and he was already in first place, so. That'll help him. Yes. Stay in first place. Yes. Uh, no fear there. Um. So, yeah, we have some bowlers. We have Elena Harding. See if uh, Miss Elena has filled out a bio. Fer Ferity, did you see anything crazy happen while you're gone? I did see someone leave a lily. Oh, no way. Yeah. I saw one yesterday, too, on the other side. And then today I saw one on this side. That was probably the craziest thing that I have seen. That, that would be pretty up there. Yeah, definitely. I would not be very happy. No, no, those are not fun. Not, not a. We did. I did talk to Norm about the trick shot. Uh, I have an interesting tidbit. Oh, for, okay. I can't us. wait to hear that one. Yeah. So Elena is from Cumming, Georgia. She's bowls at Cherokee Lane. She's 15. High game of 257. She's really good at math and reading, and she wants to say hi to her friends and family that support her, no matter what. I'll look up some other bios, but here's what Norm said a game ago. Because we asked, uh, I asked him. I go, hey. Verity and I were talking about trick shots, and we're trying to figure out why they became, uh, became unpopular. And he goes, well, I can tell you why they became popular. He said, back in the day, the reason they started doing trick shots was because everybody bowled like them. And trick shots was the only way that they could really show that they were a pro. Okay. Because he's like, I know that if I use a towel to throw a bowling ball... And I can strike with it really well. A normal bowler can't do that. And so they developed all these different trick shots. And that was how they stood out. And then he said, he goes, I, I think nowadays some of the trick shots that the younger guys do are built into what they do. Right. Because the guys can loft it 30 feet down the lane. True. A normal bowler can't really do that. I would say a normal bowler can't do what sometimes you can do on the lanes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, that's, that's definitely fair enough. I like that. Yeah. So anyway, just a little interesting tip, tidbit. So this must be the U15 girls division. I'm assessing. Let's see. U15. Yep. U15 girls. Top average is 222 for U15. <laughs> Hang on, there for today, yes. Yeah. Addison Clifton, she and then Carly Rhodes 205. We also have, let's see, the total U15 girls. Larry L. Tharps is leading currently. She is averaging 185. Ashlyn Henry 184, and then Carly Rhodes, who I thought was maybe near here, but. Not sure. Those are the top three right now. Emma Lester is in fourth. And Taryn Murphy, who is right over to the left of us, she's in fifth. Oh, and there's Ashlyn. So just off screen, you'll you'll catch them a little bit as they bowl. Um, Ashlyn is the current. I look at Ashlyn place. and I would have told you she was 17. I know. These U15 girls look much older than they uh, truly are. I thought we were watching U18 girls, but this is U15. Great shot. Got some cheering going on for the last game. Uh, yeah. So Ashlyn and Lariel are actually very close. Um, Lariel going into this game 
has has twenty five ninety nine. Ashlyn has twenty five eighty nine. Oh, so that's a that's a close ten one. Pin, ten ten pins. pins, yeah. So and I, Larry L is bowling on twenty seven. She is the C bowler. So we actually, as we as promised, watch. yeah, a division will be. Uh, and actually, she's only in the second frame, whereas they're in seventh. Yeah. <clears throat> now, also, what happened at the last tournament? Well, yeah. So here, Carly Rhodes is twenty five eighty five. So she's in the hunt too. Yep. So, but at, at the last tournament in Texas, Leanne told me I wasn't there. But in the U eighteen girls division, the last two games, the champion bowled like two two fifties to come out of wow. nowhere. She wasn't even in the discussion, and uh, she just came in and won. I love that. But that just shows with bowling that anything is possible, and it, it's not over until the last ball is thrown. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> We got a shout out for Cami in the chat. Someone's rooting her on. I like yeah. Isabella Williamson's jersey. Some bees. Yeah, she should go to SCAD with that jersey. <laughs> she should. Yeah, let us know if you're rooting anyone on in the chat. Yeah. If you have any fun facts about anyone that we're watching on the live stream, let us know. Emily here, who just bowled, she's from Orlando, and her home bowling center is Boardwalk. And this is her first SYC. Oh, and she fosters dogs with her family through a local dog rescue. She's fostered over 200 dogs in her home. Wow. And the majority are puppies. And let me tell you, fostering dogs, my, one of my friends fosters dogs, and that is a very hard, um, when you decide to do that, that is just really admirable. Yeah. And it, it can be very difficult because all the dogs have different, um, it, not issues, but they've been abandoned sometimes, yeah. right? So it's it's tricky. But um, Cindy says today is Kendall's birthday. She is F on this pair. So this well, is Kendall. Happy birthday, Kendall. That's awesome. It's a good way to celebrate your birthday. Absolutely. Bowling. Crystal's rooting on Jamie. Tammy's nickname is KK. KK. <laughs> Good shot by Emmy. She gives a little thumbs up to her family watching in the back. So Ashlyn. So Ashlyn's F. Yes. Or is it Ashlyn? It is Ashley. Yeah. So yeah, she's not having the greatest of games. She started with eight miss, nine miss. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, this area, I believe, is just watching because we had a pretty solid group of U18 girls bowling on 25 and 26, and 27 and 28 before okay. these girls came in. And their scores were lower than expected, I think. Um, and I think it's because of the way that it happened. The U18 boys started here, right? That and does then, make a difference, especially yeah. for girls. When you are following guys, definitely a different transition. Yeah, how do you overcome that? Like, I mean, I personally love it. But that's only because I tend to be further left than the women anyway. So when I bowl with the guys feel like I am able to play closer to my A game and exactly what I want to do. Um, but for the women, you just have to be really open-minded. And I think that as females, we tend to blame ourselves a little bit more for bad shot making instead of blaming the lane. Like the guys are very much like, that wasn't me. And they'll just make a move. Whereas yeah. the females think, oh, I must have just thrown it bad. But in all the grand scheme of things, it was actually just the lane. And we just have to make moves. So you just have to trust what you're seeing. Yeah, good advice for from Verity for these young ladies. That hey, this won't be the last time you follow the boys' transition. No, definitely not. And hopefully, you do compete in tournaments with guys. You know, I I think it's great to bowl against the men. Right. Yeah, know how to do both. Right, because yeah. you need to know the women's transition for the PWBA tour, yep. or when you're bowling in junior gold, they don't mix the. Yep. genders but most other tournaments you're going to be bowling 
against everybody. Yeah, and if you get used to bowling against guys, you just get used to learning, well, what is my bowling ball doing? Right. So now when you compete against the women, yes, that transition is a little bit different, but you're just learning to pay attention to your bowling ball. And something that we said in the Q&A on Friday was, you know, transition happens every single shot. Transition is not something that just magically hits you in game two. It is a constant thing that we experience. And sometimes I think that word is thrown around a bit too much in the, oh, it's happening game one, or it happens after a game. Like, no, it happens every single frame. Right. This uh, 27, we have Jane Juhas uh, stepping up. She's a past SYC champion. I think she won in the U12 girls division. Now she's moved up into the U15 girls. She's in throw urethane. That's an interesting strategy. Now, you said yesterday you love urethane. I, but I wouldn't be throwing urethane on this. <laughs> Marietta Turkey, she ends her streak with nine. It's all right. Spare it up. Can't read this young lady's last name on her shirt, but she's repping the Tough Shots Tour, which is a fantastic tour. We're a sponsor of that one. It's great. It's another great youth tour. There's so many... Just local events and different events that these kids can pull in. It's incredible. Yeah, I think it's great. And I think you have to give a shout out to everyone's parents <laughs> for bringing them to events like SYC and even just the local events, right? The sacrifice that parents make in order to allow their kids to do what they love, I think is, is very special. And they don't always get the appreciation that they should get. Absolutely. What a shot by Lario. She's a junior gold champ. Which is just, I think junior gold is one of the hardest tournaments in bowling. They don't know the pattern. They can only use five yep. bowling balls. They bowl on four different patterns, but they only bowl four games to like during qualifying. And then they cut. It, like it is just everything about it is very hard very cool though i wish i had that tournament growing up absolutely nice spare by emily now i know you don't get to like i, I want to ask this question and it's not a not a dig in any way that a tournament decides to do it mm -hmm. but um would you prefer to know the pattern or not know the pattern going into a tournament i would prefer to know the pattern yeah um i i understand both sides but i think with bowling there is so much information that is hidden anyway like we can't see the oil pattern anyway so i think like we want people to have knowledge and we want people to get better um so for that i think that we should be given the pattern. I agree with that. Especially because it changes too, right? Like, if you look at a lane pattern graph now in game five of this tournament, it does you no good, right? No, it's irrelevant. <laughs> it I mean, yeah. <laughs> it only counts uh, at the first shot that's thrown, hopefully. And topography plays into it too, right? Topography lane surface will always overweigh the oil pattern. And that's why it's so important to understand those elements of bowling. Right. Do, do you know the lane surface? Do you know anything about the history of the bowling center? Do you understand topography? There is so much technical with bowling that is a, just a whole nother level, right? We work so hard on physically being able to throw the bowling ball, but there's so much more that goes into it. Agreed. Uh, can you see Ashlyn's? I cannot. The pole is exactly where Ashlyn's score is. Her max is 182. 182, okay. Now, 
No, I'm not sure. Oh, Carly Rhodes was on that pair as well. I think Carly shot 156. Okay. But I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't know which bowler she was, but I thought that she was maybe to see. Or she could have shot 178. That's the other highest score. Okay, so either way, Carly probably will stay in third. Ashlyn here. She was 10 pins behind. Larry so out, it yep. really depends what she does. Yeah. But it looks like she's going to shoot 180. I was trying to see. It's very. Now, Larry L. I was trying to see if she she was watching the score or just bowling her own game because I think that's such an interesting. Hopefully, just bowling her own game. I would hope in this situation that she actually has no idea of the overall scores. Yeah, because when you start to pay attention to it and you start to try and put up a specific number, you never shoot that number. That's a good shot. She is Ashlyn she had a is good finish those yeah. last few frames. So she did all she could do. She she finished it out. Here's Miss Emma Lester on this pair. That was her. She is the F bowler, and she was in fourth going into this game, but pretty far back. She was. She would have need to have a really, really strong game. Or the others would have to have a very bad game. That that too. But Either that's, way. But that's yeah. something important to think about, right? When you're trying to reach a certain score. Yes, you might know that you're chasing a number, but it also is so dependent on what the other bowlers do. And 100%. since you can't control that, you can't focus on it. So I'm taking it that you're not a score watcher. <laughs> no, I will look at scores to know the pace of play. Yeah. And I will look at scores to figure out who is leading in the sense of if I'm struggling... I want to know what they're doing. I want to know who's leading so it can give me information about what to do. I like so that. I do look at it, don't get me wrong, but it's situational. Yeah. I understand that. You 12 girls, it looks like Presley Rain might be our champion. I don't know what Alyssa ran. Do you see? I mean, I hate to say it because... But I don't see any significant game between the U12 girls. So I think Presley Rain is going to take home the title here. Trevor Mason is very far ahead. Looks like he will be taking home another SYC title. He is getting up there in titles. Let me, uh, let me get the exact number he has because it is a lot. Five titles. So this is going to be wow. his sixth SYC title, and he's still in the U12 boys. That's division. amazing. Yes. Yeah. Who has the most amount of titles? Um, Spencer Robarge has 12, and Jillian Martin has have 12. Okay. So those are the two record holders. Uh, surprised, right? Right. <laughs> um, who, wait, sorry. Who are they? Blair? <laughs> yeah. But the <laughs> unique thing about this, and I think it happens whenever any tournament is created. Um, during Spencer's years, we had far less SYCs. Right. Um, and he so probably didn't didn't start when he was No, he didn't. 10. Right, exactly. He was already, I think he may have caught one year in the U15 division, potentially, but we only had like two tournaments yeah. that year. Um, so most of his time was U18. I think the most we ever had when he was bowling was four tournaments in a year. And then Jillian, um, Jillian had a very unique thing happen too where she bowled Ohio, in Ohio, there are some regulations on high school bowling. Mm. And so she could not bowl some of the SYCs because she bowled high school. Right. She stopped bowling high school, um, but same thing, there were less SYCs. So Gianna Brandolina is very close. I think she has 11 titles right now. Okay. So she's very close to breaking Jillian's uh, record on the girls' side, and she'll break the overall, I would imagine. Yeah, so, I don't think so. Yeah. How many SYC events do you have now in a year? Good question. It's nine, I think. Nine. Nine. Yeah, Amazing. so we upped it. Um, used to, it went like two, four, six, and then we went to nine. We just skipped eight. We're like, oh, let's do nine. So the way we look at it, right, we 
cannot we don't have one in January because okay. most of the youth bowlers do choose the over sixteen um, year old bowlers in the U.S. They uh, bowl team trials. Yep. So we we are like yeah no we want you to go oh. and do that right. Um, July we skip because of junior goals. Yep. Same thing, and then December we skip because. Christmas. Yeah. I mean, people should be home with their families yeah. that month. And, you know, if there's a local tournament back home that they can bowl, great. But we're not going to take you away from your family. And also, you're probably buying Christmas presents. Well, <laughs> saving the money to buy the Christmas presents. <laughs> exactly. These monies, we, or as you mentioned, like the, the, parent, the parents are committing so much. We know that this isn't a cheap weekend yeah. for them. So we do appreciate all that they, they give to the kids. Sometimes it's close to home, like Orlando, and there's a lot of Florida bowlers that are here. You know, I think that's the great thing about having those nine events, but doing them all across the country is if you're local, you can bowl, and right. if you can't, then that's also okay, but you know that there's going to be an opportunity to bowl in SYC. Close it's probably to home. going yeah. to be somewhere close to you. Exactly, and that's the goal. Like, we, we knew that we're not a – we are a national tournament, but – we also wanted to bring a national tournament to somewhere that may not have the ability to host one. Like junior gold requires an enormous amount of lane bids. Yeah. There are not many cities that can host junior gold. It's just, it's just the, the way it is. And then we are caught. We're uh, our minimum right now is 48 lanes to host an SYC. Sometimes for very, 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 um, unique cases will go to 40 lanes but we can't really be in a, a 30 32 no, lane not center. when you have so many bowlers that want to bowl exactly and and you know if you're watching this and you have a bowling center at home that wants to host an SYC we do have a form on our website that you can encourage that bowling center to fill out it's basically they're they're letting us know that hey I, I have this number of lanes we list a lot of our requirements to host in the on the form so you, so you know and then if they fill it out Leanne will contact them and they'll they'll see if we can make it fit into a, a tournament year. I love that. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Right. I hope there's some people here with a big enough bowling center to do so. Oh, and actually, you could yeah. do the same for the PWBA. Um, if you're interested in hosting a PWBA yeah. tournament, they require 32 lanes. So you can literally just email PWBA and let them know you're interested. Right. Yeah, I think it's like it was like yesterday when I asked you, like, how do you follow your journey? You're like, you literally sign up. That's the same thing, right? Like, if you're interested, don't stay quiet. Like, tell someone. Say, I'm interested. Yeah, and like from a tournament perspective, like, it's hot. Leanne's not going to reach out to every single bowling center in the U.S. and say, hey, are you interested? Hey, you're interested. Right. So sometimes you just have to be the one to do the reaching out. Yeah, and, and that being said, we have so many bowling centers that are interested in hosting an SYC, but sometimes the, we already are going to a location right. very close to you. And so that's – it's it's very – Leanne works so hard on the SYC, and she – the when she's building that season – she works really hard on that too and and tries to research okay what's going on in this part of the country like we know we're not going to go to ohio indiana illinois michigan during high school bowling season yep. right because that doesn't make any sense they can't bowl so that's why you see ohio in june right because all those kids can bowl that's smart though it's like even figuring out are there big events going on that weekend that would right. make the hotel prices go through the roof? Exactly. Little things like that. Yeah. Like, there's so much more that goes into planning an event. And I, mean, I think it's pretty amazing what you and Leanne do and all the team at Storm do just to make an event like this possible. I mean, the logistics of having 220 bowlers come in for a whole weekend and they yeah. all get their own bowling ball. They all know what lane they're on. Um, just those logistics are oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, we love it. It really is one of our favorite projects. Because how can you not love these kids? I mean, it's just inspired. Like, yeah. at the end of the weekend, you're like, all right, cool. I'll go back to work now. <laughs> I just want to go ball. <laughs> yeah, right? They are so inspiring. Well, they also are, are probably making you go, oh, yeah, how old are you? <laughs> when are you coming out on tour? <laughs> For real. I think we are going to try something new today. I have to talk to Leanne again and make sure we really are going to do this. 
but I think we're going to attempt on the Storm Jr. Facebook page to live stream the award ceremony. Okay. Which we've never been able to do because we've never really been able to hook in the sound, but I think I can use we have a we have a mic now, so we might give it a go. Let's do it. I don't want to promise anything, but we're going to try. All we can do is try. Yeah. We have Malia Briggs in the chat. Hello, Malia. She says hello. We were just talking about you today, Malia. Yeah. And she just won a tournament, so congrats. Yeah. Lots of uh, fans in the chat are cheering on their boys. I love it. Donald says, keep it clean. You got this. I think he's cheering on Cam Cammy has all of the fans in the chat. Cammy, you, uh, you have a lot of friends. I love this. <laughs> I love that people want to watch bowling. Yes. And PBA show is probably on all right about now. It is. Oh, One o'clock, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Go cheer on the players. Those shows were so fun. Have you ever done uh, any, like, celebrity type events appearances i have last year the nascar event that's actually going on today i bowled that last year um, nice. and it was so much fun so much fun yeah um, that's one i bowled a empress of the lanes Ooh. for pba so pba used to have a king of the lanes and they did a female version which was which was really cool yeah oh, i remember that I've heard the NASCAR fans are really cool. Yeah, it's actually amazing how many or how much of an overlap there is between NASCAR and bowling fans. Right? Yeah. A lot of people who support NASCAR also really like bowling. And yeah. I had never really made that connection before. Yeah. And I think that's why that event was so successful. And actually, recently, you'll notice a lot of the PBA shows have come on after a NASCAR race. So I'm wondering if that's why some of the viewership has maybe gone up just because they're watching oh, the NASCAR yeah. race and then they continue to watch bowling because they also like bowling. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I hate I, if there's NASCAR fans in the chat. I, I've never really watched NASCAR. I am not a fan. <laughs> Sorry to all of those fans out there. I really enjoyed going to the NASCAR race. Yeah, and I have a really huge appreciation for what the drivers do. But I'm very into Formula One. Oh, so yes. Not that it's a clash because they're still driving, but I have a little bit more love for Formula One and a lot more love for Formula One I, than I do NASCAR. I got a little obsessed with F1 when they did the Netflix oh, documentary. Yeah, it's really good. yeah, I liked it a lot. I haven't finished it, but um, just because I got busy and they released a season, so I'm a few, a few behind. But um, yeah, that, that F1's cool. I like that. Yeah, I would love to go to a race one day. Where where I grew up when I was in uh, college, I had a friend who um, they like the dirt track racing, which is like they have like sprint cars and different types of cars that do it. And, and I prefer that over NASCAR. Okay. Um, but I think any sport, although I've never been to a NASCAR race, so I can't really say that I would say this with NASCAR, but any sport live, I like better than I, watching. I agree. I yeah. went to a NASCAR race when I bowled last year, and it was cool to watch. Yeah. 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 I would not watch it on TV <laughs> yeah. now. I get bored. But I enjoyed I enjoyed the race. It was just, it was loud. And yeah. There was a lot of crashes, too. I felt like the race started and then restarted and then restarted and then restarted. <laughs> yeah. That is the tricky part. Are you going to go to the F1 race in Vegas? I wish. Yeah. So expensive. So expensive they right also now. have one in Miami, which would obviously be a little bit closer for me, oh, yeah. but it's when tour starts. Oh. So dang. my dream race to go to is Monza in Italy. Oh, yeah. that one is That's, that one is cool. That would yeah. my dream. I I'm wondering if the I've heard just because I was just in Las Vegas and they had the F1 and then the Super Bowl. And I heard that the F1 was a little under attended. Because they price out it was a lot the of most people. expensive race of last year's season. So I'm wondering if this year they might drop the price slightly, maybe, because I don't think the Las Vegas community was quite pleased with it. 
either. Wow. So I don't know. Well, maybe we can That's host for insider. that. Maybe if anyone wants to buy me a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Um, Larry L here. She is on. She's a C bowler. You see her on 28. She left a 10 pin. But she has won. I, I think she's won. I do. I think, and this is her third SYC title, I believe. Let me double check. Yes, this is her third SYC title that she will take home. Which Amazing. Is just she's incredible. had a great weekend. She has, yeah. And um, she's doing it kind of in her home. She's from Florida. Coach Pat, who Pat Costello, as everyone knows, is one of her coaches. I, I, I told Pat when I walked in on Thursday night, um, I was watching her practice, and I saw a little Stephanie Johnson in her. I was like, oh, there's there's some Steph, and mm -hmm. I didn't see it before the last time I saw Larry Ebel, so finishes with 207, so she does, she's not leaving a question mark. She's like, yeah, I'm going to win. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see the conclusion of our U15 girls pairs in front of us. I do think for anyone that is wanting to watch the awards, if we do manage to live stream it, I, I heard a rumor that there might have been a slight breakdown on one pair, and so there may be a delay. Okay. So just if you're looking for the awards, just hang on. They'll be there. I'm going to stream it on the Storm Junior Facebook only. So I know we kind of float around. Storm Bowling, Storm Bowling YouTube. This one's going to be Storm Junior. And it'll live on, so if you miss it, or if you have watched all of all of this lovely coverage and you're like, I I probably should do a chore or two because it's Sunday. You can watch it back later. Or you could just not do the chores and watch it live. That that's usually my strategy on Sundays, unfortunately lately. At some point I do have to clean my house though. <laughs> it doesn't clean itself. Oh, I wish. Those Roombas, right? <laughs> All right, Cammy. everyone in the chat is rooting you on, or KK as they call you. She's wearing a cool jersey. We were commenting on the cool colorways that Coolwick has brought to the SYC. Yeah, they bought so much with them as well. It's pretty cool to see the huge setup that they had here and especially some of the deals as well. It's a bargain. Yeah, it is, yeah, they're, they're great. Hold on, Bubble. Um, all right, well, that concludes our SYC Florida event. Thank, Thank you, you Verity, Blair. for being here this weekend. Good, we are all wishing you good luck. Norm and I were talking earlier. We're like, man, Verity's going to have a great season. I'm going to have to go back and watch this, Blair. <laughs> like, just your mindset all weekend. We're like, yeah, you're doing all the right things. And you can tell. And we were like, kids, listen to Verity. Be positive. Well, Do thanks. all of the things. So anyway, good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck at the Masters. And uh, until next time, we're going to Michigan next month for the SYC. So until next time, we will see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. In the 2024 SYC Florida. The 2024 SYC Florida would not be possible without the generous donations from our sponsors. Storm Bowling, Coolwick, PBA Junior, Kegel, Turbo 2-in-1 Grips, 3G Shoes, Ray's Eyewear, Ballard's Bowling Academy, Master Industries, Quality respite and home care, and by TND Transportation. Special thanks to the official scoring system of the Storm Youth Championships Bowl Metrics. The preceding was produced exclusively by Storm Bowling. For more information on upcoming events and more, please visit stormbowling.com. Once again, thanks for watching.